Yeah, 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 my boy. That's on the neighborhood. Say word. Yo, what's poppin' with y'all ashy asses? Me go in the building, make an auntie back the match. Okay, I'm just foolin', let me cool it. See y'all listenin'? Join us as we get these big guts to black ass. Okay, who's in the use of a bitch? You can't fold them. Feed them something different than that circus I go see it in. Just a little humor, so it never be your boy. So welcome, Mr. Martin. This is half the kids and more. I still gotta shoot a video of that, bro. Yup. Right on, bro. Took me to show me love, bring me a game, game. 
house, I'm talking lessons at the schoolhouse never gave. Right there at my auntie house, a poet and play a maid. Inspiration to this ambiance, my new nine days. That's the rest, you turned into drunk and drawn into haze. Now we blowing all this shit that we know today. That's the rest, you turned into drunk and drawn into haze. Now we blowing all this shit that we know today. Hit blow with me. Take a stroll, hit a corner, let's enjoy the breeze We don't really have to talk, let's enjoy the weed This the birth of our nation, this the words of my dream This the meaning and dedication, this ain't my G Vibing by the touch, 35, 17 If you know what that mean, I be vibing by the touch Where I'm from, my bad bro I be vibing by the touch, keep it long Till I see the fucking sun Yo, vibing by the touch Turn up, turn up, uh, or turn it on up. We back on another episode of Ethnic Issue More, episode number 52 of season two. We coasting today. How y'all doing, man? I appreciate all y'all ashy asses, per usual, coming back to kick it with me. Y'all have been here, I can't say 52 weeks in a row, but you've been here 52 weeks minimum for this season around, man, and we always appreciate the love. As y'all noticed, the past master is not here today, but we got to clap it up for my brother because throw him DJ horns, man. He just passed, finally had the baby. So shout out to my, my god child, Leia Lee, Eloise Grimes. Came into this world on the 21st. That's dope. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing, man. I've been getting pictures daily. So it's, it's, it's super dope, man. I told him. I'm going to have to live through you on that. Because I'm not spinning a block on this baby thing. You know what kids for you, bro? Nah, bro, my son finna be 14 on the 14th of October. That's what my mama be telling me, too. I got a 16, yo. She yeah, like, don't it's, start it's over. It's too soon. late. Yeah. It's too late. It's like to the point where it's just like... And then I got my girl two kids, so her youngest is just turned 10. So it's like, all right. That's still enough age to like, all right, there's another little gap of kids space. Yeah. When I got in, his life, he was six. So, it's been, I, I had to be around another little kid again, but to start over from a crime. It is kind of crazy, yeah. Bro, that shit is A little ghetto. crying baby that again. That shit ghetto, bro. I'm not doing that shit again. I, I kind of want a baby, though, man, because I ain't never get to, like, do the whole baby thing. Like, okay. Yeah, it's like the beater kind of, because okay. I got in some trouble and stuff, so, okay. yeah. Okay. I mean, no, nah, but that, that would make sense, though, because I got the experience. You got the experience. I had the baby. <laughs> Shitting in the bed in the middle of the night, waking up to shit everywhere. Yeah. I had the spitting up in my mouth, but it's it is a beautiful. It's experience. a beautiful, yeah. It, that's what dope, I want. Bro. I want like, to experience that. Yeah. I, 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 now, if I was that, if uh, my girl was like, "Oh, we break," it's like, "Ooh, ooh. we finna, and we found out like, I was like too late. Like, if that was a decision, it was like, "All right, we stuck with this." Then it's like, "All right, man." It's not like I can't do it because it wasn't. I didn't have that experience. Where people was like, bro, this shit was so motherfucking hard. Like, I was in college. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had my son when I was, I think, I was 21 already. And then, so then he was born some months later. And being that I had a good support system, his mama had a good support system, I ain't go through that phase of where it's just like, bro, this shit. It was just like, now I got this added responsibility <laughs> of like, all right, I'm accountable for a whole person. Right. Like a whole human being look up to look for me for shit. Your responsibility. Bro, that, that's crazy as yeah. a concept. You're like, damn, bro, this and then to see it from somebody be so little. To see him grow. Like, that's that's the beauty, bro, man. That's the beauty. Yeah, yeah. Voice get yep. I remember the first time I noticed his voice was deep. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, bro, who is Your you? Your voice deeper than mine. Bro, it was. I called his name. He like, I'm like, Sean. He like, yeah. I'm like, Dang, who in there? I was like, hey, grown ass man in that room uh, re replying and shit. Yeah. Uh, he be trying to make it deeper. And I'm like, bro, you straight. Life finna be 14. I mean, like, you about to be, be out high of high school. school bro. He about to go to high school. Yeah. About to go to high school. Yeah, yeah. hey, bro, he go to school on the east side. Watch the park. Unity I Luther. Oh, that's nice though. Yeah, my little cousin used to go. That's actually a good school yeah, right bro, there. Yeah, that's actually a good one. He's been there since kindergarten. Yep. So I'm letting them thug it out. Even though I'm staying on this side, it's just like, all right, them your peoples. 
I'll let you you finish it up with your class and all. You that. went to school over here or over there? No, I'm not, I'm from out about Chicago. So oh. I'm from Aurora, Illinois. Oh, okay. I heard I'm about born that. Yeah. Yeah. I thought That's he, the world high school. Yeah, I thought he was from around here. Nah, I've been out here a long time. For a long time. I've been out here since uh two thousand eighteen and then shit, I went to Lincoln. So I graduated from Lincoln University in Jeff City. Oh, then um, Jeff City is. Yeah, so I went there in 09, graduated, and I found my What's way What's your math then, bro? I got. I actually had a back a degree in criminal justice that I never applied towards criminal justice shit. For real? That'd be wild how people go to college nah, for bro, this stuff. I got it because I got in trouble in college, and I felt like I got fucked over. Yeah. I was watching enough of them shows. I'm like, bro, I could have figured this shit out. This like, never you know happened what? again. I'm finna learn it. <laughs> I said I'm finna learn it Cause I always said If I did do something In that realm Police that's dead Alright none of that shit Ever crossed my mind See y'all none of that I would've been a Juvenile probation officer And they so, need And they need And it's still in the sense of kids Like what I do now yeah. But it was more so like Cause I was a, I used it The only thing I really needed Like that degree for I was a caseworker And I was for kids And helping kids out That's kinda where that shit started at And I was like Bro I'd be a juvenile probation officer For the simple fact that I'd rather help you. You already kind of fucked up, depending on whatever life situation. Or you may have a good life, and you just fucked it over. But if I can help steer that shit, if I can get one or two of y'all to be like, all right, man, that's a good Mark deed, the reason deed. I did. You know, I got my shit together. And that's all. Yo, just just to, just to help a couple that's, that's people or one is. person. If I can one, help person. one person. Yeah. I did enough because if that yep. one person helps somebody, that seed keeps spewing and growing. And all that shit. So I get to do that through education now. Yeah, I commend so, you for that. I, I preach, bro. Our youth need that. Not just our black youth, but youth in general, man. They need all the guidance they can get. All of them. Yeah. And I'm going to focus on mine. I know, yeah, mine. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me because <laughs> our our kids need it a lot more. We already we already know about Shout out Past Master. Tapping in, man. Before we even get too far here, because I get deep and get to talking, man. Shout out to my boy Jay Amad in the building. I know y'all was wondering who that other person on the opposite side, man. That's our guest tonight, man. Dope. I know the music you heard at Peace 98. 98 was a good year. Thanks, it was a good year. Years. I was born at I was born in 89. So you was So you, I was I was uh, was nine. I was nine, man. Yeah, I was ten in eighty eight. I love like yeah. ninety eight was a good just cause shit. I grew up like I said about Chicago, so Jordan last championship. I got to watch this shit in real time. Dance, yeah. Like in the t- the telling kids, they be talking about Jordans and shit. And I'm like, bro, they don't know the history. You don't get it, bro. Like I seen a kid. I was wearing some Kobe's one day. He like, man, why you got them? Why you got some basketball shoes on, Mister A? Like it's regular shoes. I was like, you got Jordans on, right? I'm like, you thought they just made these motherfuckers? No. I'm like, maybe the color you got. But I'm like, bro, Jordan played in them shits. And they don't know that. Nah, man, I guess you can figure out. I can't believe it either, the way they feel on my feet. I've been damn my hoop to some fucking Jordans. I ain't never hooped to those Jordans. Bro, I said, they, they, they hurt. Like, I ain't never hooped Bro, to my feet be hurt like a motherfucker. It's for style. Yeah, some of them be cool. Once you break a man, you good. But Jays to me ain't meant nah, for me. Nah, they I guess unless. You got to take get, that left shoe off all the time. Uh, like, man, this left shoe is tight. It don't matter. I think the only ones I probably could. Make it in twelves. So I was gonna say some twelves or some thirteens because they got room. They bulky, like yeah. yeah. And I can uh, change out the insole. It's a different shoe. That's yeah. really the downfall of most shoes. They give you that little paper cute ass insole for no reason. You could take that on. No, I'll take that shit out yeah, so, if I need to. Especially but, that left foot every time, dog. Man, that shit be <laughs> killing me. It be my right foot. Yeah, my right pinky toe. Them fucking elevens be killing me. My fours be killing me. After a while, but once I break it, man, them motherfuckers be cool. But, y'all, before we get too far up in here, man, as I always do, every week, man, we do a thing called a numerology corner. Okay. Or what I do is one of my segments. It's where I take the number of the episode, I go on my favorite website that I've found called sunsigns.org, and I look up the number 52 and try to find something that I feel, if it ain't per se fully relatable to me, maybe to the guests, maybe who paying attention, whatever in that nature. So for the number 52, it is asking you to have firm belief in your skills and judgments, which were the basis for the significant alterations you have made in your life. You can rest assured that these modifications will result in favorable openings, which will be for the benefit and improvement of your life. I, I, I truly believed in this when I read it. Because, I mean, I, we stand, and we were talking about the past few weeks, man, you have to believe in yourself. 
Yeah. If you don't believe in shit that you do, that shit's not gonna work you out. You gotta have confidence in yourself. Confidence yeah. and fucking belief. Mm -hmm. Because I can I can know I'm good at something, but if I don't believe I'm good at it, it gonna work. it's not gonna work. Yeah. And and it's not even saying believe per se where oh well if I'm gonna get famous, that shit go I'm like, bro, it very well can't happen. But yeah. it's about how much how much are you how long are you willing to stick with this? Until your goal happens. Because it ain't impossible. It's people like... Well, like, like when I say like currency. We know currency is famous. But to me, he's still like a regular nigga. Yeah. Who just got a... He's great at rapping. And got an abundance of money and figuring out how to do it. I don't need to be... An A-list. An A-list. Yeah. Famous rocker still be B-list, C-list. to whoever. And that really depends on how you value Look the person. Yeah. But... Because it, there's a lot of people that's out here dumbass famous... I'll be clicking on Instagram page, motherfucker got 92 million fucking followers. I'm like, bro, I've never heard of this never person. Never heard of him. So how did, how did all these people know about this person? And I ain't know. Now, kid-wise, I can get There's a lot of kids out here. So if a kid know about some shit I don't know nothing about, it makes sense. This is a bunch of kids. It's a bunch of them, so they, and they know how to run shit up. Mm -hmm. But for you be a 50, a 30-something year, I'm like, bro, I've never heard of this artist ever in my life. But you a number one charting artist. I'm like, that just showed it to me. How big the world Like even yeah. though The world is small It's still fucking huge Because it's Or it's just A whole We don't really pay attention To anything outside Of our world Whether that include Other people and all that But everybody Walking amongst people We all in a different world mm -hmm. And just moving around And shit But belief man Belief is something That you definitely can have And if you just Truly believe in yourself Man them doors Gonna open up The shit that you want To happen Gonna come to fruition Man you just gotta Rock with it you gotta stick with it, and just don't, just don't be into something purely for what it's gonna get you. Because if it ain't in your heart, that's you, you gonna give up on that shit real quick. Yeah. And so that just is what it is, man. That's the numerology corner. Shout out to the number fifty-two. Fifty-two. So, bro, we got a segment here that my co-host usually does. I know y'all missed the. Uh, Past Masters pick, man. We gonna he gonna bring that back next week or whenever he bring it back. But he do his football picks within HBCU sports and the NFL. But he has another segment called "What's Pissing Past Off." And since Past is not here today, what's pissing you off? What's pissing you off me? this week? Yeah, man. What's pissing you off this what's week? What's pissing me off this week? Let me see off the top. Uh, damn, bro. Oh. Uh. The, the Marcellus, um, yep. Marcellus Khalifa. We just got to see. We just gonna talk about it, but that's yeah. Well, no, that and look, we ain't even gonna get too deep in it because that yeah, that's my that's, what's that's pissing, pissing me off too. Me off, yeah, so y'all yeah. to be continue on the hold that thought because we gonna we gonna get in depth on that, and that's why I made it the first topic tonight because that shit fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked that up. That shit fucked up, and that just show you how people value the life of people, especially black people, but. And I ain't gonna say that's another topic for another day because we finna get into that shit today. But uh, before I can get too deep into that, man, I gotta do my favorite thing. Oh, and before I get too, 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 too far in here, hold on, Paz. We gonna we gonna talk about it. It's the, it's the Marcellus Williams, man. We gonna talk about it in a minute. But before I do it, man, I forgot to do me and Paz the tag that we do for every show, man. It's hard to do it without him, <laughs> but I gotta do it like he's here, man. Because we call this wonderful show Ethnic and more Postal Podcasting. I mean, the rain, sleet, or snow, we in this hole. We going to provide all the motherfucking news, try to drop a little bit of these jewels, and try to locate all the motherfucking missing blues clues that this nigga Steve lost on his way to rehab <laughs> and get his shit together. Shout out to Steve, man, because Steve can still drop a post and get folks my age and their feelings. Because Steve used to ask us, man, how you was doing. I read a whole, t well, I ain't going to TikTok, but it was screenshots of it. I like, man, how y'all feeling? How y'all doing? And it was all of those who remember watching him just telling where their life is at that point. And when people are vulnerable enough to talk about that shit, that shit is deep. Yeah. Reading where motherfuckers like, it's just like my life, as I said, being in your own world. My life can be going X, Y, and Z right now. But you could be right across from going through a whole whirlwind of shit, just masking it up for the moment. Yep. So we got to be kind to people out here in this world, man, for real. I, I preach that daily to kids, man. Even though I joke with them, flame them daily, I do make sure they know, like, bro, I'm here for that. Like, if you need to talk, you need to holler because your mom pissed you off. 
I'm like, y'all already be cursing. So I'm like, if you need to have that moment, we go in the room and you scream and kind of get a couple shits off. Yeah, get you got it a three off curse me. word limit. Yeah. And then you got to just start yelling some other shit. But <laughs> I'm there for that because I understand y'all kids get raised by kids. Some of y'all parents are younger than me. Yep. And I ain't but 35. Yeah. So that just let, and your kid is in life. In school, and I get it, my son was that, I was that young, younger pair of my pops was like, what? By the time I was in school, that nigga was damn near 40. He was 40. By the time I had first, like, I think first grade, maybe? You had an old, you had an old. Yeah, he was 34. Yeah. When I was born, my mom was 29. So, my mama, he finna be 70. Oh, yeah, he's got an old. He's gonna be 65. So, it's just like, I got an OG. Like, you got an OG, OG. He was my yeah, age yeah. when I was born. Now, my brother age, he was my age when my son was not 21. That's how I know I had to get past this 34, 35 phase so I know I had no more kids because that's when he had me. I wasn't going. Slip was happy. I was happy bro. for 35. Slip like, was yes. happy. I made it past 34. That's the curse number the that, curse. that I was born at. I'm like, I can't do that. I'll be in this bitch. Happy but sad because I don't want to be. Big, big facts. Kindness is a lost art. Nah, it is a lost art. Yeah. Because I just don't understand sometimes how. And I get it, man. We Motherfuckers was mean when we was kids. Like, like kids is fucking mean, bro. And even I mean, adults like you. You can tell you had tough skin and shit. Some people don't. And I'm just I was built different because I came from that era of, of talking of shit Jonah, about people. Yeah. yeah. So, but we also wasn't just I wasn't just doing it to the motherfuckers. I wasn't that, a bully, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing it to nobody unprovoked. I ain't walking up to nobody. I need mean, ooh, look at your clothes. Look like I ain't. I was never that type of kid. Cause at any moment my shit could be just like that. Yeah, we had like zoning contests back then. Yeah. Like the whole classroom was yeah, almost zoned. But then yeah. it was all participants. Yeah. So these motherfuckers now, like this age of bullying, like bullies, what I vision a bully now, bro, like it was niggas one nigga out the school be getting bullied. Maybe two. Yeah. But it wasn't like no thing to where now and I mean I know it's the internet and all that shit and trolling but, and all that, but I don't like Bullying in person, I guess if you're just a mentally weak person and somebody got size over you and you ain't figured out the mind game to the bullying shit, because really that shit is just a cry for, nigga, you doing better than me or I wish I was you type shit. Or that person might be going through some stuff yeah, and you so trying to, yeah, it out on you misery loves strong, company. Bro, yeah. love it. So they just want you, since I'm fucked up, you finna be you fucked finna up. because I can, up too. You smaller than me, I can take advantage of you. Because somebody probably putting them hands on him. Yep. And it, you now they trying like, to get their yeah, issue off on you. It's yeah, true. On the pass, little person. Just passing down Trump. Mm-hmm. But the internet bullying shit, I don't understand. Because, like, a, a motherfucker couldn't talk bad to me. I'm like, bro, I'm going to block you. You got, two, you got about two, three posts before you start getting now on you nerves. Got, that's yeah, easy. Easy you. fix. And I'll say what I want to say first, then do it so you feel even more pissed about it. But, bro, I'm like, bro, I could just stop reading the shit. Stop reading the block button work crazy. Like that shit, I'll be watching kids running because they so sensitive now. I'm watching kids getting blocked on Roblox and crying about it. I was like, what? I'm like, bro, y'all hella way. They hella sensitive. Yeah, bro. I'm yeah. talking like, bro, y'all hella way for this. And I'm like, y'all would have never survived a, a regular Xbox chat. You niggas would have fried. They was talking about everything under the sun and them bitches. I'm like, y'all be crying over simple stuff. They came destroying my house, Mr. A. Like straight in the crying. 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 I'm like, I'm like, you crying? I'm like, you really crying, bro? Yeah. Especially if you a little boy doing that shit. I got my brother, man. They stop all that. If I could tell y'all don't stop all that shit, I would. They sensitive. Bro, they man. just I don't understand the I, I ain't gonna say I was an emotionless kid. I just wasn't gonna be crying for no now, reason. No, we couldn't though. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. It yeah. was also taught to us don't not, be crying. Don't be crying, men. Don't cry like yeah, this. Like so, what you crying about? Like, yeah, yeah. So I tell my folks like, bro, cry. If you got a reason to cry, you can get it out. Get yeah. that shit out. Yeah. But then what? As I'm older now, I get it. Yeah, like, don't I keep get that it. stuff that in shit, you, bro. Man, It'll eat you alive. Yeah, it eat you alive, bro. Yeah. yeah. It'll fucking kill you. I, and that and the crazy shit, the shit that's supposed to make me cry don't bother me. Me neither. I'm but known the, to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Videos I'll be watching that be sentimental. Late like, at night when you up by yourself. What <laughs> the fuck? Because yeah. it's, it's just crazy. I'm like, damn, bro, that shit beautiful. You got a soul. That, that's that's what it yeah. is, bro. And and that's how I know that motherfucking governor ain't got one. And we're going to talk about that. Like, that's whack. But uh, before I get extra. 
because we're finna get into some good topics, man, that I know I've talked to a lot of people about. They're like, man, you gonna talk about X, Y, and Z? I'm like, man, it's a lot. Of, it's two, three of them. I can just hold enough on that alone. But before I do that, my favorite part of the week is the sneakers of the week. And outside of me talking about shoes, I always got to show my shoe of choice. What you got on, bro? I, I, I do this. I got to break out a pair I haven't worn yet. My Canary Yellow Travis Scott Jordan ones. They came out. Maybe With the gum drop bottom. Gum drop bottom, bro. I love these shoes. Man. I've been waiting to find a reason to wear I finally found the right hat. I can't wear that a shoe if I don't have the right hat, bro. Nah, that's iron. You got to have the hat. I, well, I got yeah. so many shoes just sitting in boxes because I haven't you found, found the right hat. Yet. Or I need a new black hat that I'm like, bro, I just don't want to wear that one. You got to accessorize with your stuff. Bro, Otherwise, it was a use. Or you, you looking bummy, you bro. You looking bummy, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you ain't, some people be overdoing it. I'm like, I'm not finna Nike this, Nike that, Nike that. I'm like, as long mm. as my socks is matching whatever shoes I wear, then I'm cool. Unless I just got some... Socks that ain't got nothing to do with Nike, Adidas, none of that. It's just color wise. Because some people had an assumption just because just because you have Jordans on that you fly. I don't no. think so. I don't think First so. of all, they make Mexican Jordans that Mexican we call them. Jordans. They make all t- we got <laughs> They make all types of J's. So we got, a lot of people just think buying Jordans make you fly. I'm like, nah, but because some of them Jordans ass. Even if it's like, and I'm talking about some of the retro colorways they make be Still ass. ass. I'm like, oh, I fuck with these. I'm like, these they could have kept. So it's a it's a market for everybody. It just ain't my ministry for this shoe. But you gotta accessorize. I'll be trying to I, one thing again with kids, man. I'm trying to teach them that shit. I'm like, man, y'all be in here. I always want to talk to me about shoes. I'm like, nigga, your laces don't be tied up. You dragging them. You stepping on oh, them. Man. Shoes be dirty. I'm like, so I'm finna start killing the value. Grouping together, bro. A bunch <laughs> of little dudes who like to talk about shoes, man. We gonna I'm teach them how to clean that shit right. Stuff that's going to, stuff you can teach your son if this becomes something you like. To pass it down to them. Yeah, yeah. it's just like. Sneakerheads, yeah, yeah, for kids. Because they, they be pulling up, I be watching, because I'm a builder sub. So I just cover whatever class need. And me and the other builder sub, we got an agreement. I don't like dealing with little kids. She don't like dealing with the big kids. So I get third and up. She get the she big She first kid. and down with rock, paper, scissors, second, depending on, you know, the day. And I get the big kids, I be in there, and they teach don't leave, you know, we just kicking it for the day. <laughs> And I'm like, all right, they get to pull it up shoes. You got these, you got these, you got these. I'm like, bro, no. Nah. I'm like, yeah, I do. Why you buy so many of these? And I'm like, bro, it's just my thing. I'm like, bro, y'all be most. Oh, they really ask me, can you buy me some? Hell no. Hell no. No, nah, I've done it before. <laughs> you been when they been the, well, like, doing we, good. We first did a sneaker ball. Every staff, well, most of the staff, at least the black people. And some of the other ones did too. But we decided to adopt a kid for the sneaker ball because it was First time we was bringing it up. We know everybody ain't got the greatest of shoes, so we knew which kids we was looking at throughout the school. And I picked my little homie, and I bought his whole fit. So I'm like, I ain't finna go. I'm like, you don't want no suit, fool. Man, I get you a nice little button up shirt, so I'm like, we we'll get you. And I let him within a price range. Price range, that's reasonable. I show, I pulled him out of class, and we went through hell with shoes on. Like, Where'd he end up picking, bro? Some uh, air up tempos. Oh, oh yeah, like, I like Scotty them. I got, I got a few so of them. Yeah, I like them. He picked the black and red pair, which is the pair I had when I was, for some years back, I got it in the home with. And he was like, I like these. These cool. I'm like, bet. And we got my make sure his fit was flying all that shit. And I was just like, I'm cool with doing stuff like that till I can get that type of shit sponsored. To where they coming out your pocket. Yeah, yeah. bro. And it, it's going to happen. Yeah. Because I'm like, I try to, I'm going to start incorporating the content I make into school work. But that's how you get your blessings back, yeah, bro. So bro. look at it, you know, even if you don't look at it as blessings come back, they're going to come back. Bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. No, and my blessing is being able to instill something that I love and bring up another generation of that that's taught the right way of that shit. Like, bro, I'm like, sneakers is an art. Yeah. And people don't, motherfuckers, some people just think it's shoes. I get it. And look, uh, Morgan, you right. We was raised, talk about we was raised on Lil John and the East Side Boys. That's why we ain't, uh, that's why we ain't sensitive. I'm like, that's a fact. Yeah. These kids got some head busts. These niggas raised up on Ride Wave, and that's why they be sad. They cry and stuff man. like, hey, this is a sad man in there all day. Or listen to them depressed ass pill popping music. Yeah, with that auto tune and stuff. I'm like, all right, bro, I get tired of hearing that shit. I'm like, that's why I be, motherfuckers like you. Thanks, bro. And a lot of other people, bro, that's the type of shit I like. Like, I call it mood music. There's music you can, I can smoke too. Oh, my favorite thing is cooking, 
breakfast in the morning, I'll run through albums of people I fuck That's with. what people be telling me about my music. They be like, man, I listen to your music, you man, I cleaned up the house. Bro, like, you got music. <laughs> First of all, people don't understand to me how much of an honor that is. It is, though. Now that I get it, because you relaxing. Yeah. You a kid that grew up cleaning up the crib, having to listen to loud-ass music. Every Saturday. The same shit, but it was like, <laughs> this is my version of what can I buy to to clean the crib. For a long time, I was right. I got a playlist of number Smino songs. I'll put it on Suffolk. That's my cleaning music or whatever I'm doing for that time. I fuck with I my nigga Lou Tribe. I run through his album. Lou Tribe. I fuck with Lou Tribe. My nigga Reese Young. I ain't never heard of Reese Young. He, so he from the Lou. He live out in Jeff City, bro. I'll, bro, I'll tell him, if a New York nigga moves to St. Louis and adapt it, that's who he is. That's who he is. Like, I got to hear him, man. You get his, he, he got a project. It's a series. So there's only two of them out right now, but it's called Heart of Lou. And Reese Young is one word R E A C E, the yeah, R E A C E Y U N G. All right, brother, nigga, bar. He got bars, yeah. Bar That's all I be looking for Uber, for real. He's bar heavy, but it's just like that. I, he got that old to me. He got that old N Y vibe, but with a St. Louis essence. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, what that's it. I was like, bro, you a St. Louis nigga with a Yankee hat on. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's, that's really what it is, bro. The, the nigga don't, bro. But you the know? Midwest a melting pot, so we breed, is, we breed a lot of that, like a lot of stuff. And I'm sure there's a lot of other artists out here underground that's lyrical, too. We just ain't found them yet, for real. Yeah. Living from here to, I'm from Aurora, but I live downtown Chicago with all motherfucking artists because my dorm was, 90% Columbia College. Mm-hmm. So all the artsy kids and all that shit. But as far as underground scene and music, St. this greater St. Louis region from the east side to the loop got the best indie artist I've ever heard. Like just, it's so as rare as this many people that you can come across. And especially over here, bro, because it's a whole demographic of people that got like your style of music that like, Y'all need to tap in, man, because yeah. there's so many motherfuckers I'll be coming across. And I'm like, bro, I can hear them like, bro, you a sapphire. This nigga on this song. Like, y'all are coming with each other, this type of shit. I just, matter of fact, the last, we didn't do an episode last week because it was his birthday. But we did one the week before. Uh, it was me and my homeboys, Jay Kazi and Tony Pill. I heard of them. Yeah. Bro, they got a project out right now. I think it's called Some of the Best Ones. Some of the best rap music that you ain't never heard. That's tight. That's tight. Something like that. But, bro, them two niggas can't rap, rap. And it's like, you know, motherfucker. And I, I, get, I guess the word people coined for, I used to hear when I was young, called backpack rap. That's what they try to but, say. I'm a backpack rapper. Yeah. But, and I, I, don't, I don't understand where the word come from. Me neither. But I understand the music. The music that's grouped into that lane it's my style of music. Cause yeah. to me, it, like I put currency in that type of lane. Chance the rapper, like yeah. when he first came, acid rap, Chance the rapper was in that lane. Like Lupe, Lupe like you know he a lyricist. Mac Miller, all them like. And to me, those are all people who create mood music. To I, I can create a various different types of music to relate to whatever mood you feeling. But you could play even my my most heartfelt song. Play that shit clean in the kitchen, bro. It's the beat selection to the to the bar. I feel like backpack rappers got the most lyrical, the most artists. substance. Like Kendrick is a backpack. Kendrick rapper. backpack, yeah. Like, the elite backpack. Elite, like yeah, he's elite. just yeah. greater Andre, of the Andre three thousand is a backpack, backpack rapper, rapper bro. Yeah. Like and who meshed well with a pure hip hop. Yeah. Because Big Boy really a trap. Trap rapper. He was a trap rapper. Yeah. He a trap rapper with pure lyricism. Yep. But shit, we could have said, like, Young Drew Young was Drew. a trap rapper with fucking with boys. Hey. It was just how he put it together. A lot of people ain't want to give him his just do for lyrics, but I'm like, nah, bro. See, Biggie, Biggie Smalls, backpack rapper. Backpack rapper, yeah. bro. Tupac was a backpack rapper. Bro, if you um, go back and listen before, to, like, before yeah, before that, that um, like, his last head, project. Uh, it's a back rap type song, yep. but then you got. Or you still down. That, that whole yeah. project was backpack rap. But then you got like California, Machiavelli, all that shit. Yeah, that's that when he crossed over. Yeah, his commercial. Yeah. But that's the type of music I think motherfuckers truly, like if you truly a, truly appreciate the the art of music. And we got the charges and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, my old broke at the bottom. Yeah, they're red. Oh, oh. Yeah, yep, ghetto stuff. Yeah, hey, look, they're over the charge. <laughs> look, when they came out with them, it. change the fucking game. Yeah. But look, you been for my, my sneaker choices, y'all, because I got off topic real quick. Uh, I got two of them this week. 
One of them is going to be a Travis Scott that's dropping this week. But the first one, I've done another shoe of his, which I was fortunate to get. I was one of the few people. I think it was more pairs than this one that's going to drop. I'm going to pull it up so y'all can view it. But is once again, I'm back with an independent designer, John Geiger. He got the Friends and Family Green and Beige Camo 044s. I fucks with this shoe. Uh, I'll turn it around so you can see the kick, man. Oh, yeah, that's nice. So I you got. Remind me of them Kyrie's, Kyrie. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I like them new Kyrie. Yeah. I like them. I'm gonna get, I ain't got a pair yet, but nah, I'm planning to get yeah, one I just like to say. I got one in my one, collection. Yeah. But it ain't something like I buy. The most shoe I've been buying lately is the Anthony Hill ones. Uh, and, man, he got the AE ones. I had to look them up. I ain't oh, never bro, seen I got like eight pairs of the bitches. For real? Four. What's your favorite colorway of them? The one I just bought, the red and black one. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's supposed to be pure. It's like pure ruby is the name, but it gave like a bread, Jordan bread colorway, bro. It's made by Jordan. It's a Jordan shoe? No, it's Adidas. Adidas. Adidas, bro. Adidas right now got the best on-court basketball shoe. I have seen a um, nice pair of Adidas that I want. I'm like, no, yeah, don't. No, bro. Damian Lillard, the Dame Lillard, not the Dame Nines are fire. He just did a little collab with Bape. I like Crazy 8s. I do too. Yeah. I think to me, I think that's Kobe best shoe. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. But it's better than the moon boots he made. With I ain't like the dude. moon boots. I like the Hirachis and the um, the ones I yeah, just said. Yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy I got some. I got the Kobe sixes, the reverse Grinches. I got them. But other than that, I do call crazy. I had a pair of crazy. I sold them years ago, but I just bought they be hard to find crazy. No, nah, bro, they bringing them back. They bringing them back. So they on Adidas sites, like, and they on sale. Everybody oh, I gotta give me a pair. Yeah. I've seen at least four, or five colorways. Oh, when I get paid, out. I like the black and white ones. Yep, they got the, the original. Yeah. yeah, they got the black and white ones, white and gray, like a white, bluish and gray. Uh, bro, I've seen red and white. Yeah, it's a couple colorways that we've been bringing back out with them recently. But with the uh, these man right here, these the double O four, which is shows for his fourth. Signature shoe, and uh, man, this pair is a friends and family pair. So, for those who don't know what friends and family uh, mean, as far as in the shoe world, this means that you get a select amount of pairs that you only give it out to. We're pretty much your friends and family, but it's usually like your friend wise for them be notable people. Like DJ Khaled, I always get a friends and family pair from somebody. It's certainly like Jordan do that shit with like. It'd be like 23 pairs of the shoes. So 23 people in the world have that shoe, which is where you end up with these shoes that when you see them at sneaker con and other things mm -hmm. like that, costing 50, 60,000. It's because of the so value. Pairs, it's only yeah. so many pairs. And some people see the value in that shit. Well, these were supposed to be a friends and family pair of shoes. Somehow the shipment got lost, uh, but then turned up. But he was missing a bunch of the shipment. And he only has 100 pairs of these. And they dropping this Saturday, no, yeah, Saturday the 27th, no, Friday is the 27th. Dropping this Friday, the mm -hmm. 27th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, so that's 11 p.m. here. It's limited to 100 pairs featuring green mesh camouflage pattern across the upper, along with detailed beige and forest green layer TPU. This shoe sits on a beige rubber outsole with white popcorn midsole for maximum comfort and support, and it's finished with web and pull tags tabs for easy wear. Each pair come with two sets of laces. Like I said, dropping the 27th this Friday at 11. If you Central Time, uh, make that <laughs> what's that? 9 o'clock if you're on Pacific Time and then make that 12 o'clock for my folks on Eastern Time and if you're in Denver I think that's 10 o'clock because they only one hour behind. But I can attest to being someone who has a pair of these, just in a different colorway, which the colorway I think he may be in the running for sneaker of the year at the end of the year. The melons, that's probably one of the most super comfortable shoes like that. That midsole make it do feel like you walking on a big ass cloud. So shout out to John Geiger, man. Shout out to him for following me back on Twitter, bro. I like I like fucking with his like what he make, man. I do sneaker content. So I'm trying to just get in. I'm trying to get out of buying a whole bunch of stuff. I'll, I'll be one people to just send it to. I'll send it back. <laughs> Don't send it in my size. I'll just send me a return label. Give me an hour, two hours with them, and I'll bring it back to you. Uh, but I'll just be wanting to shoot different content, man, about sneakers. So I'm going through my collection 
and other people collection that I know from around the way. How many shoes you think you got now? Over a hundred. Over a hundred. That's a lot of shoes, bro. Yeah, that's like in the past year and a half. Oh, that's only in a year and a half? Yeah, I restarted man, my crazy, whole collection, bro. bro. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been going a little too, too crazy. I got, I'm only waiting on a pair of shoes. What you waiting for? My, uh, it's a company called Ama Manier. Ain't never heard of doing. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's by a dude named James Whitaker. Yeah, I think it's, that may not be his last name. It could be his last name, <laughs> but uh, I know he part of the Whitaker group. So that, yeah. but it's like that's an umbrella. That's a big umbrella for two different stores: Ama Manier, APB, and Social Status. But it's a uh, brother do a collab with Jordan, and it's a pair of Jordan Fours. Yeah, let me see if I got them. Easily up on my phone where I could just pull them shits. You know, you got the motherfuckers yeah. in your wish list. <laughs> ah, them hard, yeah. Yeah, hard. so it's a pair of Jordan Fours, man, that I'm looking excited to, to get. I'm waiting. Hey, ship my shit, man. Because the people that ordered after me got shipping tracking already and I ain't got that shit. Come on, man. And then my last pair of shoes, man, I did a double up because I got on a pair of Travis Scott's. And he got a pair. Of which, for those who know, uh, a pair dropping this weekend on Saturday. Everybody know Travis Scott shoes. It's a commodity. They mm -hmm. hard to fucking get. If you can get them at the retail cost, they only cost a buck fifty. But when you catch them on resale, they going up to five hundred. All that right. type. Of, like the shoe I got on right now, five hundred plus. Did you get it for five hundred? Hell no. Hell no. You I'm got it on retail. retail. Yeah. But I just luckily for me, by the grace of God, I got connections with people that, that help me uh, attain that. What you need? But I'm not. I paid. Resale for shoes. I had to. The most I did was these shoes recently called this lady named Nina Chanel did a collab with Nike on some threes. After all the fees and shipping, it was three eighty seven. Who is Nina Chanel? Uh, she's an artist out of I don't know. If she's out of Harvey, Illinois, which is by Chicago, and I think she's from there, but she lives in NY. But she's like an abstract artist. That's dope. And she make this she like Basquiat. Yeah, but she kind of make this real dope. Yeah. Art with these colors and all this. She got a real scheme to it, like these block symbols. Block, and stuff, like yeah. she got that type of art. Like you're supposed to make something that stand. Like how a boss guy, you know, if you know art, mm -hmm. you know his shit. If you know art and have studied what she do, you can see it and be like, ah, right, that's that's her. Nina Chanel yeah. shit. So I, I paid for them because I was like, bro, I want anything. But I tried to get them at retail. <laughs> it just ain't work out in my favor. And I wish I, I low key could have waited a little bit. And I got them cheaper, but I want them. I want them. you want them. When you want so it, you want it. I want That's what I'm like. That's why I'm like. I teach the kids, man. You work to buy what you want. Yeah. Not to work to die. So that is what that is. But on these Travis Scott's, man, I'm trying to turn around, show you these that's dropping. The medium oh, olives. With that olive on yeah, there. Yeah, so they dropped this uh this Saturday. And it's a, a whole bunch of raffles going on, man. But once again, Jordan Brand and LaFlame stick to their winning formula, favoring the earthy green base and white leather overlays for contrast. The signature oversized reverse swoosh appears in black, dipping into the midsole on the lateral side, while the overarching construction stays true to the original Jordan 1 low build. Unique Travis Scott touches are scattered throughout, including the embroidered Cactus Jack logo on the left heel, a crisscross text on the medial side, and a custom tongue tag, all of which appear in red, per usual. So, I think it's a fire shoe. I'm going to try my luck this weekend. If I get both of them, maybe. Maybe you just get one. Yeah, as long as I get one. <laughs> yeah. But I go for both of them just to do it. And Travis Scott, low key, I'll try to go for a couple pairs of his, like I said. But if I always try to certain shoes. I go for two pairs. Like if I get two pairs of his, keep I one sale. I sell that other for five hundred. That's a hustle too. Yeah. Hustle. So yeah. and I ain't that the person like trying to buy a bunch ten of, of them. Yeah, yeah nah, that's crazy. Yeah. But, but it, I, I don't knock the people that do. I hate I that they him. run up the prices. I hate they run up the prices for motherfuckers. But that that era of that shit starting to die out. Yeah. Because it. It ain't gonna die out fully, but it was resurged by COVID. And niggas just having money and nowhere to go. So people bought hella shoes, ran the prices up. Oh man, when they gave us that um that one money, yeah, well, that um, stimulus, down to the stimulus money. money. Or if you was on unemployment getting that uh, bread, yeah. but you ain't gotta pay for rent. You had to pay bills there, like everybody was getting out of shit, Collectors, bro. like not so even collectors. niggas collect, but just buying shit. So that allowed them to run that, that shit up. But now there's market starting to fail and. Crumble and I just be watching. I put shits on my want list on go. Check it two, three times out of the day. Cause if I catch a pair at the price I want, 
snatch it. I'm grabbing. Yeah. That's that's what I do like about go in resale because I don't buy shoes under the cost. But I'm like, man, they dropped on here. I waited a couple of days looking to go. I'm like, yeah, I'll wait it out. So shoot, I would pay 180 for 190 something after tax. I get for 120. Oh, that's a steal. You can't pass that you know, up. I'm like, unless it's something immediate work where I'm like, bro, I got to be somewhere party or something. I need this shit. To go with what fit. I got going on. I'm not yeah. in a rush to get it because it's not going to do them sit in the box for the next few months until I decide until to I got a word until I remember it. Shit. Some of the shoes I put on, I'm like, damn, I don't have the box. Just to work for this one occasion. Put I this got one stuff moment like that and put them back in the yeah. box, bro. So I'm trying to get, I'll be trying to, that's why I, I wear different, trying to wear a different shoe every day. Because not only you need to wear them motherfuckers or they fall apart. Start but turning yellow and stuff. Yeah. Fuck with my collection and be like, I'm Damn, I know you had them. I know you had them. I'm like, bro, I ain't know I had them either to this morning. But it is what it is. So, shout out to both Travis Scott and John Geiger, man. Travis, um, they dropping on your website probably before this weekend. Ain't nobody stressing with that shit. It's so hard to get shit off that nigga website. Travis Scott. Yeah, bro. He be backdooring them motherfuckers. Niggas, they be sold out by time the shit drop. He bogus. So, or they let them what we call bots, where people pay for this little extra software right there. They got the money to run through, submit 300 times and hit for like 50 of them. Cause they got bucks. Oh my God. I'm like, yeah. I can't compete with that shit. I can't knock the hustle shit. No. Nah. Well, I ain't want to hate it. I'll be pissed about it, but I can't hate knock the, the game, hustle. Yeah. Look, it's the game. It's part of the game, dude. Yeah. So, it's just like, it just is what it is till we beat the system. Yep. That's what it is, man. But, before we get into our random topics, man, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Get us a track in by my boy Jay and mine, man. We're about to play this too much. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's Ethnic Issue More, episode number 52 of season two. It's your boy Nico the Great. Let's get it. Is it too much to ask for? That's all I want to know. I just want the world to feel my vibe and understand me more. Why two grams when I roll? That's for the deuce. Why I drink Remy Mo? That's for peace. Why I stay down to the end? Never switch a fold. You know, dick game like the final fold. That's the only way I like the flow. No lies when you tell the story. Who keep it real the most? Keep your eyes on your friends and foes. Be careful who you call your bro. And never be for about a hoe. No, no, never be for about a hoe. I wish my black woman cared again. I wish my black men did the same. Bring love back in the house. Teach the children. Give some game. It's too much shit. We need to change. I got too much shit on my brain. So I put me one to a flame. A big old joint to that Mary Jane. Can I put my feelings in the earth? Can I get some motherfucking earth? Don't nobody motherfucking care. Unless it's some J's or a purse. Man, and it's only getting worse. Can't rap without a Lamborghini skirt. When the last time you heard a good verse? Too much of that faith won't work. Too much of that hate and it hurt. He mixed the Zans in the surf. She off the gas, wanna twerk. And I want a vibe out of church. Just getting high with the stars. Thanking God for the day. As I pray for the more. As I pray for the more, it's too much, yeah. It's been so much going on from my households to relationships. We in complete disarray out here. Too much hate and too much death. No positivity and uplifting. That's what we need. I'm ready to be alone. Let you know everything gonna be okay. Rest in peace to extension. I'm back better in the Great Lake Nipsey Hustle. And if you heard this, you gon' survive the rough patch that you going through. Even though it's too much. Say am I. Hey, turn up, turn up. We back in this thing, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, man, it's your boy Nico the Great, man. We got JMI in the building. JMI. Y'all heard that too much. Make sure y'all go check that out, man. Too much out on all streaming platforms, man. Y'all heard that. If you don't want to do too much searching because you're lazy, I provide those links for you in the description. Whether you're watching it on Facebook, shout out to my Facebook folks. Shout out to my YouTube people that tap on and always, they've been showing me the most love lately. Shout out to my Twitter folks. I've been getting a lot. I've been fucking with going live on Twitter. That is my most consistent medium for this show. I always get a good, we got a nice good, about 50, 
50 plus people right now on Twitter tapped into us, man. So shout out to my good Twitter family. Shout out to my dog in the comment section, Stephon R. Kale, saying that song was fire. Because it was, man. Like I said, good mood music from my boy JMI. That's too much. Now, man, to these random topics that we said we got to touch on. Our first one is a heavy, heavy topic with a heavy heart to it. Because rest in peace. To Mr. Williams, Mr. Marcellus, I think it's Khalifa. Khalifa, yeah. Williams, man. Unfortunately, during the setup of this show, his execution went through. Yeah. And his his I which I did have pulled up, man. I'm gonna pull up to y'all his last words that he had. For the word, because most people, some people don't want to say nothing, Mm -hmm. and he chose to say something with those last words being, All praise be to Allah in every situation, and that that shows you a man who unfortunately had to come to terms with what was going to happen, and unfortunately, he was shouldn't have been in that predicament. Um, as we've seen, evidence proved he was innocent, and because they got the ability to do it, they did it. They did it. It happens more than, and I ain't gonna say it just happens to us, because it don't just happen to us. No, but it happens white people to us. get railroaded. They, they get railroaded yeah. too. It happened to us a lot more than it happened to. Them. But also, the disproportionate rate of locking people up happens to us more. So of course we would be the higher number to that. But I think it's fucked up, man. And fuck Twitter, even though we on there, because I'm pissed at y'all. Because y'all, I put a tweet sharing when I saw that he finally was executed. And the tweet said, like, I put one saying, uh, fuck Missouri and uh, Governor Parsons. Like, for that shit. And they limited my tweet. And made it so people couldn't see it. Which I'm like, how I violate something on Twitter? And I can open that bitch to a whole booty hole. And, mi- and in the middle of the day, I can't even open Twitter in public. Because I'm scared somebody going to be on that motherfucker fucking. Moaning and shit. Loud. I turn, I turn my volume down anytime I get on Twitter because you never know. Yeah. And I can see that at any given moment. But I can't say, fuck Missouri. Okay. And... Governor Parsons' hoe ass. Without getting and, flagged. And that's not a threat. I'm like, that ain't no threat. He ain't even gonna see that shit. I ain't tagged the nigga. He'll never see it. And if he did, fuck him. Fuck him. That's how like, I feel. Because that's how he felt about this man. Like, the people, the victim of the family didn't want this to happen. And that's crazy. I, to be honest, I think execution shall only be for, like, rapists and child molesters. Because or if you like shoot up a school, or yeah, something shit like that. Like that. Yeah. But th- that's usually involving kids. Anything yeah. harming kids and taking something of a sexual nature, nature kill them. I, motherfucker, just because you kill somebody don't mean you deserve it. No, nah, you don't, because you don't know the circumstances yeah, behind like, it. Yeah. And, and not saying that the per- you got the They're right not, to kill them. Yeah. But nigga, if you did this just because you a fucked up person, you should have to suffer. Yep. You should have to suffer in jail. Like, why take away that? If you gonna die, nigga, it's gonna be on your accord. You're going to have Kill to, yourself. how strong are you? Yeah. Are you tough enough to take your life? Because. That's what we got for you. Yeah, like if yeah. you can do that, do that. But we not finna give you the easy way out. And nah. like, I guess the suffrage is sitting on death row and not knowing, or, or when you do find out the date, not knowing and then finding out and just counting down that shit. That's crazy. But it's too many people. Everybody don't get the advocation of people wanting that shit not to happen. So when you do have that shit happen, you need to look into it, bro. It's like this many people not saying don't kill this man for just to be saying this shit. It's been proven. Like, and I'm like, especially if motherfuckers knowing, like, especially if you got re-election coming up. Is, you think it's going to be more people mad that you ain't killed him or more people mad that you did? More people mad that he that y'all killed him? Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, would you want that in your favor? Well, shit, let, me, well, let me fix this because if I got my reasons for it, because I'm like... It was going. He was going to still have to sit in jail until we figured it out. Because if the evidence 
if they just let him out like he should have been off the evidence, y'all would have just still held him there as long as y'all could until shit got figured out in some capacity. And I'm like, brother, shit fucked up because clearly this man ain't deserve to lose his life like this. Like, who wants their last words to be on paper in a sentence? Your last, your last moments of life was broken down to a sentence. One sentence. One sentence, and he could have been hate, hateful about it, but he came to once you sitting in that space for so long, knowing this is gonna happen. It's inevitable. It's yeah. just like, bro, I I gotta get my mind right. So when it do come, I'm not tweaking about the shit. And I'm like, bro, going through, I'm like, bro, y'all got ample time to stop that shit. Y'all can get celebrities involved. Like, what? They had religious leaders of all backgrounds involved. I'm like, bro, what was it gonna take? For y'all to realize that shit was fucked up, and just like, all right, bro, let's let's do a stay and figure out some more shit. You Give just, him some more time. Him and the attorney general just like, nah, kill that nigga, cause it's one less black person they gotta worry about in all essence. And Missouri is the last state to abolish slavery, so when you be here, this this just like New Orleans, like down in Louisiana, like that's just these two states, railroad states. Yeah, yeah. bro, it's just like, oh, we can. It don't matter, bro. It don't matter. We can get rid of you. Look at the look at the movie Life. Yeah, the motherfuckers did what sixty something years in jail. It was jail, innocent. All for an officer to get mad at a motherfucker, kill him, and just because the blood fell on him, it worked out. It worked against them. The motherfuckers ain't had no evidence besides that blood, and the niggas tr- telling a true story. And so many people like that in our uh, penal system right yeah, now bro, because just of that. Off of a true like, bro, I did. I was just the wrong place at the wrong time. Sometimes motherfucker don't be nowhere near the place and still get roped up. They just need somebody. You may have got in trouble, getting pulled over. They still got your picture for the lineup. And they want so they need a convince, they, uh, conviction. Fiction. They just, yeah, that's the all conviction. It is. It's a numbers right. game, yeah. bro, and it's a money game because the more people you got locked up, the more money the state get or them prisoners get for that shit. Mm-hmm. Well, so they. It's we a business. Ain't, yeah. it ain't, we ain't worth just like the, they claim back in the day a black man wasn't worth no more than three fifths of a man, which is 60% of a white man. Their vision ain't changed on that shit. Nah, yeah, nah. It's, it's just subdued. And really, it ain't because with Trump running around, the motherfuckers feel proud to be on that shit. Mm-hmm. When the same that I never understood because it be the little. Hillbilly racist motherfucker loving dude, but I'm like, bro, the policies he doing against, that shit ain't gonna work for your broke ass. Nigga, you're you're the same as me. I may be a nigga to you, but you the nigga of white people. <laughs> like, what is we talking about here? You are the nigga of white people. They don't fuck with y'all. Hell no. They look at y'all to say, well, look, I right, get to going off of white people. I'm gonna spare y'all today, man. Because it ain't all of y'all, man. No, it's it ain't. Not, no, it ain't. It's some it ain't. good ones. Nah, it's some good hey, white folks. Just like with police, man. A couple bad some apples good spoiled police, a bunch. Yeah. I work at the city hall, so I okay. get to be around police. And at first, me being coming from my background, I, ain't, I wasn't around no police. So yeah. I look at them different now. It is some bad ones, but it's, yeah. it's more of them good. Though, it's more that's good, yeah. bro. Like I said, it's just the stigma. And a few bad <laughs> apples are ruined a bunch. And to me... You being a black officer, which rest in, uh, rest in peace the black officer that recently lost his life. Uh, I think his name was David Lee. I don't want to misquote that. I believe it was someone that... We're uh, in Missouri over here. Yeah, Missouri. Uh, he, I think I remember him. He was on the that. highway. And his drunk driver hit him. And he ended up dying a couple What he was hours. doing, a traffic stop? I, don't, I oh. didn't read the article. Because I just I get tired of reading. And seeing, like, what? Don't nobody deserve to die. Mm-mm. Like, nobody... Unless you're just a... Uh, Evil motherfucker, then that's just the karma that you yeah, this is what it's you bestowed upon you. Upon yourself, yeah. But doing your job and not not doing your job incorrectly, doing your job the way you're supposed to and losing your life. Everybody leave their crib for work to come home. Man, I don't think nobody shouldn't come home. Man. The concept of that shit still it'll never be normal to me, even though it is normal for people to die. And the to concept that motherfucker on, straight leave the crib like, oh damn, I was just talking to them. Ten minutes, they can walk away from you, and that shit happen yeah. instantly. It's just like no, so you live your life time. to the fullest, man. So rest in peace to him, man, because that shit sucks. Yeah, for sure. But on another topic of a black person, but this one's wild. <laughs> Sean John Combs, Puff Daddy, with it saying the uh, Bad Boys for Life, P Papa Diddy Pump. I guess that name may be true. Uh, P 
Diddy, man. Nigga, y'all saw it all. We heard it all. It's been a while before I, we went on the show last week because that that's all we was going to talk about. But Diddy. The Diddler. The Diddler. I said they trying to get Riddler of the Diddler <laughs> because the boy is doing in the feds right now. He on suicide watch. Yeah. All right, his lawyer said he cool. All right, all right. I'll be big. Diddy in the feds. Diddy still Diddy. That nigga ain't broke. I'm watching broke niggas live better than me sometimes in jail. Man. Nigga, I see the nigga eating Longhorn. I don't even be at Longhorn like that. <laughs> Outback steaks. I don't even be eating like that. So I ain't finna knock a nigga locked up because you got to make the best out your situation. So I know Diddy, Diddy, and Diddy in the feds, bro, he's still fucking Diddy. One of them officers asked for some shit. He ain't killed nobody. Now saying what he did. And me saying what I'm saying is not taking away from what he is a, alleged to have done. But I'm like, he ain't in there for like murdering. Now, hopefully he ain't did nothing. If he pop for some child, it's going to go wrong for him. But them officers go, man, Diddy can get it out, bro. I got 100000 right now. I need to be in here cool. Okay. Nigga, they don't pay me enough. Yeah, yeah I'm going to take that 100000 I ain't going to do nothing wild. But I'm going to make sure you good in this yeah. bitch, bro. Y'all do not fuck with this nigga. Like, that's 100, I just got a hundred k in one payment versus what I'm now. I don't even make that in a year. To make it's like two company. years of their salary type shit, depending on what you do. So I can understand somebody gonna do that shit. Look as soon, as, yeah, yeah. soon as I saw his name on the, the little on list, the I, got, Ooh, I noticed yeah. that Sean Cole we think about. <laughs> I got it. I'm like, bro, so what we, I need some bread, bro. What we gotta do? What you trying to get? Right, what you need up here? You need McDonald's? You like baby oil. Uh, <laughs> speaking of. I got, I got take the mic. Like I'm baby oil is gold. We gonna get to talk of that baby oil shit. Did he? Now, <laughs> if Diddy is only accused of being a freak, it's some freaky motherfuckers out here. It's a lot of freaks. It's huh? people that boo boo on people. Yeah. People that like to get kicked in the nuts. Yeah. It's people that they have dress fetishes. up as fuck as dogs and get walked on leashes. Ain't no wrong with freaks. I've seen some wild shit. So freaky, we're grown. We can look past that. But if you out here like drugging motherfuckers and they ain't willingly taking that shit. Not acceptable. Because that's not acceptable. And what's, ain't no capacity of drugging nobody except now if you a grown motherfucker I popped the molly in something. And you did that on your own. And you did that on your own. I don't think nothing bad should have happened to you, but I'm not going to act like I got the fullest of sympathy yeah, because you wanted to party. Certain situations yeah. you avoid. Me knowing Diddy's background I wouldn't do that with Diddy. Look, bro, I was just on a podcast. Shout out to the High Heels and T podcast. They had me on this past uh, this past Sunday. I was the last guest in a bat shooting, and they brought up the Diddy shit. And I'm like, listen, me know how Diddy is. Everybody's gonna want to go to the party because you've heard these magnificent stories, million dollar Diddy parties. If I get there around six. I'm already tired around 11, but depending on what I've been drinking and smoking, I may be turned. Once I start noticing niggas is going in rooms and shirts is moving, it's time for me to go. That's when it's my yeah. cue. When niggas take their shirts off, oh I gotta God. go, bro. Why you taking your like, shirt off? Like for, you bro? see, say you in the party, you see one nigga in the back, you be like, okay, um, yeah, this is all right. It's a freaky I may not party. trip off the first nigga because niggas get hot. We air yeah. drunk, we party. But then I start seeing two niggas, three niggas. Oh, mm. okay, hey. Too many shirts on. It's been good, y'all. I'm fucked with y'all. Y'all niggas back there oily. I ain't with that. What we finna hoop? Why y'all got yeah. shirts? First of all, shirts, Diddy, why you got two king size beds on, on the, the motherfucking court. court? Oh, Miss Tussie it said free Diddy and free kids. <laughs> I did talk about R. Kelly on the show too. Anything that was done, cause he wasn't anything with kids. Condemn that nigga to the death, with the parents need to be condemned to. Yep. But if we for say, except for, for, for allowing yeah, a lot for of that you stuff. pushing your kid, yes. Me saying the parents need to be held accountable is not taking the accountability away from the grown nigga who should have known better. But if you 18 and up and you chose to do whatever little freaky shit he is, you I signed get, up for I it. I get people get, he shouldn't even, me personally, once I hit a certain age, I won't mess with nobody past 25. Me neither. Like, it's just. I, I ain't interested. Yeah, yeah, I need you to be able to rent a car at bare minimum on your own. Like, I'm not interested. We got different viewpoints and shit. People be mature. And if it happened, it just happened by chance. But I won't go no more than 25. You're not targeting no yeah, 20. Targeting you wouldn't no, be targeting no 25. Like, what I'm motherfuckers newly fresh and able to drink. And so, look, I feel that. 
Free Diddy, they was grown. They wanted that oil in them toys. <laughs> if it's grown motherfuckers who was willing participants it's of the good. shit, yeah. I am no not, harm done. No harm done. Y'all just some freaks. But if the nigga was giving drugs out to motherfuckers who didn't know, especially like if you ain't no normal pill popping motherfuckers, you shouldn't been taking shit he doing. A pink powder. Hell no. Hell no. No, nigga, I don't even like Pepto Bismol. And you give me some pink powder? Pink powder, nigga. It's that Bill Cosby shit, bro. Yeah, bro, look. And they look, <laughs> Quaaludes was a thing back then. It was, yeah. So, I know some of them people that try to get some money who are willing participants in taking a Quaalude. You just didn't know the effect it was going to have on you. Yeah. You ain't know it's going to knock you out. Yeah, so that's why I don't do shit. I'm taking a pill. Yeah. That shit's not for me. And you know that. And it's like once it took me one time. It was half the first time. I was like, uh, I don't know if I feel it. That whole time, I just told the story. I said, when I realized I was in bottoms up so damn long, I saw the strippers come out in their regular clothes. I knew that that shit wasn't for me. You heard too long, bro. I was bro. like, it's eight o'clock. I was like, is that that girl who put the titties in my? I'm like, man, you look like an upstanding. Woman in this normal jean outfit. That's because she is. It's time to it go. It is. <laughs> 20 minutes ago, you was booty butt naked spread in front of me. I was like, y'all, I'm not doing this shit ever again because why is it 7 o'clock and I'm just going to sleep? <laughs> I'm not built for that shit no more. Nah, I mean, that was college days for me. I'm not doing that shit. But yeah, if you was a willing participant in that shit, uh, I don't want nothing bad to happen to nobody, but you knew what type of time. Niggas been talking about these freaky ditty parties for, for years. If I've been hearing this shit since I was in like middle school, high school, y'all grown ass niggas been hearing this shit since you've been in the industry. So, why just would you go? I'm not going. Right, I'm not going to go kick it at Kevin Gates' house. That nigga's a freaky motherfucker. You're too freaky. I don't for know me. what he on. I'm like, bro, you're too wild for me. First, I don't trust a nigga with a feather in his hair all day. Oh, fuck is you, Tonto? Like, nigga, what are we doing? <laughs> But you is what you is. But I'm talking like, about eat too much booty. Yeah, for me. he just too aggressive for me. And like, I don't trust no nigga that said he touched a battery with his bare hands and it started and, and the car. Started, oh, Stop yeah. fucking playing with me, bro. Yeah, you don't wild. got no supercharge. You is not no man. motherfucking uh, Avenger. None of that shit. That nigga just is a weirdo. Eat the booty. Yeah, I'm like, bro, if you eat booty, cool. But why do you gotta keep telling, telling me everybody, this? Everybody, yeah. Is it? I'm like, I'm like, you that lame nigga that just be in motherfuckers inbox telling motherfuckers I eat, like, your, I eat your whole ass from your shoe, from your rooter to your tutor, bitch. I'm like, damn, nigga. I want to do they wash it first or do they just eat it? No, that type of nigga live like you know. I like a little seasoning on my booty. I'm like, you're a freaky motherfucker, kid. That nigga, nasty. I, I'm off, nigga. If you a freak, you a freak, but. And there's no flatty too. We don't be need to know that shit. I don't. I don't need to know. I oh, I need to be fucked. Well. What man? What niggas? Is what happened fucking? to modesty? Like women is not modest no more. Oh, I see the post on Twitter that say, which it ain't knocking. If that's your profession of what you do, do what you do because everybody consumes sexual things of some nature. But it be the only ones that piss me off be the ones be booty butt naked and they be mad as hell that that's all they're surprised that people are acting for. I'm like, man, and no, you shouldn't. No, that's not right. But, but let's call a spade a spade. Yeah, that's what you bringing out. That's what you bringing to the table. Man, that's what you showing if us. If I advertise nothing but weed, I expect people to call I think me to buy weed. weed. Man, yeah. I know, nigga. I just smoked myself. Oh well, you got a lot. I thought you may have been selling something. Nope, it's personal. But I can't be mad if a hundred people hit me up, ask me up for weed. Like, I'm promoting it. You I do. You promoting your booty. You promoting booty shaking. Like, bro, I do this through my hair, bro. How much do it cost? Is it thirty nine ninety nine? Like. Because if we're going to, let, let's beat around the bush here. Look, you selling it? I'm in, I'm buying I'm it. in the purchase mode. So what are we talking about here? Like, we don't have to, like, we're grown. Yeah. We don't have to play the game. I can I be a consumer. You. What you mean? Your lights off. What is it? Depending on if you got Amber in the night. Like, ooh, you got Amber in the night. That's kind of high. That's 500. You must be trying to do something strange. You must really be trying strange. to hang from the ride like Mimi did in the shower. Five hundred Matter of fact, uh, I need you to drop some IOU cards because you owe me a couple more coochies for that five hundred. You know what I'm talking about? It's just your coochie, but plural. I'm gonna need to bring. I'm yeah, like, we need some one, I'm like, so you see, you said you sell it for one twenty. Okay, so for one twenty, I'm like, can I get five? Can I get a BOGO deal? I need five QVs. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so if we're doing that one twenty. Let's do it wholesale. Let me get it a hundred dollars. 
I'm gonna say 30 minutes. Let me get another hundred dollars for 30 minutes. That's all I need, baby, to prove my point. <laughs> and let me get five of them. Take it. I'm like, you didn't have the 500 at all. Now you got the whole thing. All you gotta do is give up five coochies. Five coochies. Do it on a scratch off. So I can scratch off like a little. <laughs> like after five, do I get a six one free? Like how does this work? <laughs> how are we selling the cat now? It's up to you. And they all got little menus now. Like women Bro, come with menus. Be, like you want to see hey, my hey, menu? Hey, hey, I respect <laughs> it. Listen, public service announcement. Miss, now I can't say that because they who I am yeah, right now. Yeah. Nico, Nico the Great is not this a sex worker. If that's what you do, I respect the honest hoe. I look, bro, I would rather, I've been telling people who's growing up, all they hoes. I'm like, bro, hoes was the coolest people I knew. Yeah. I could tell, we could talk sex stories. And I'd be like, damn, you was doing that and shit. And they'd be so open. Like, like, hoes was so open. You was a freaky mother. Because the hoes, I'm all thinking, I'm like, we're talking about this and we smoking and drinking. Lord. Yeah. I'm going to try that part. I'm going to try what James did on the third. I'm going to do what <laughs> Antoine did on the 16th. With a spin in it, I'm trying to make you do the lens spin, like she talking about on girlfriends. Uh, and I'm just like, bro, if you got, it, if you if you selling it, cool. If that's what you do, stand proud and strong. I don't like the finicky hoes. Like you, you one foot in the whole house, you one foot out of society. I don't like the hidden ones where I gotta yeah. find out you a hoe. No, uh, no, baby, that's what you do. That's what you do. I was with this girl for like uh, some months before. I thought she was a stripper. Didn't know she was a stripper. And I seen a picture in her phone, and she was in a locker room. I'm like, man, I'd have been like, do you hoop? Huh? Do you hoop? She like, um, she was like, oh, what she tell me? She told me some crazy stuff, bro. But it, it didn't make sense. She finally came out like, yeah, I've been stripping. I was at the Jello contest that night, and all this. I'm like, oh man, you could just kept it real. My thing is. I still accept that I moved in with it. Yeah, look, I'm like, so. <laughs> it's even funner. So you be stripping. It was trouble. <laughs> so if I'm buying a pole in this motherfucker, is you going to toot it and boot it? You going to spin around, twirl around. Mother, 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 mother. My, thing, my thing be this. Let a nigga know a friend. It's just like the same thing women ask. If I ain't the man, we're we just going to be doing X, Y, Z. I'm all for allowing the other person Give them the a choice. option yeah. to move how you want them to move. So if this is you stripping, are you a sex worker? And I know this. I'm like, sex. I'm like, well, are you a sex worker? Are you a sex worker? Sex worker? Like, anybody can buy the cat. I don't like that. Or this that content creator cat? Or you a solo person? You just solo. play with it. Like you just play with yourself. Cool. Oh, I love I'm that. I'm a videography. Yeah. We can make, make just, this work. Yeah, you just and a if DJ. If you need a stand in, I'm here because I support black businesses. I do too. I can't say in my past I've never bought an OnlyFans. Why? I have because I knew though. the person and I was like, well, I I'm always so want to see. Who doesn't support single moms? Are we all supposed to? Who doesn't support black? I support black. But we, we can't pick and choose the black businesses we don't support. I ain't supporting Diddy. That's a different type of black business. Support your friend OnlyFans. Buy it. You spend $10 on less that month. That's two less fish fillets. Buy that. And if you and if you ain't trying to be re- keep getting got for it, pay for it and then turn off the reoccurring. That's what I do. All real niggas know. <laughs> turn like, it off. I'll be like, that motherfucker fine on it. Only bought it once. Look, I'll be making it rational. I'll be like, well, it's like six pack of Rello. All right, man, fuck it. One that's more six, time. That's Let's six see six what pack of Rello. I was like, oh, you going here? Getting it in. Getting it in. I'm like, you know what? I wonder you, what she do next month. I'll give you one more month. You have been to send a DM like, hey, homie, I bought your shit. I need you to keep it consistent because I see you've been lacking. So, well, you need a videographer. What do we need here? We need to turn it up. What we got to do, boo? Let's get it together. And speaking of Diddy, this nigga Meek Mill trying to act oblivious. So, we're talking about, oh, he want to pay 100K for an investigator to, to see why, why his dad keep coming yeah. up. Nigga, y'all have matching shirts standing next to Wee Man from Jackass. Creepy. The questions. And Meek, you do a lot of questionable shit. Robert Kraft had you jumping like a bunny because you lost in tennis. Freaking bunny rabbit. Freaky frog? Freaky ain't frog. Ain't no white man for the in my motherfucking life. Ain't no nigga. Ain't no nigga. But definitely ain't no white man. We not finna play this <laughs> game. Fucking have me on some motherfucking jumping up. Why the slap, Robert? And hey, you supposed to be like some type of gangster, though. That, that's where my whole thing Nigga like, went to jail. I mean, this nigga went to jail. Man, nigga ain't no gangster. That nigga went to jail nah, for riding a no motorbike. Gangster, bro, yeah. Nigga went to jail for riding a bike, which I thought was fucked up. That lady was just being a 
Yeah, that judge, she, she, yeah, she real raw to him a little bit. That's why I don't think she got no job no more. Yeah. She just being a bitch for real. But, but him supposed to be like some type of stand up gangster and like him like having this type of persona for him to even be implicated in this yeah. is crazy. Yeah, I'm like, nigga, and I get it. And a big thing I did hear Charlemagne the guy say, or not even Charlemagne, Red, shout out to this dude, his name OG Stu on Twitter, man. He from the Louisville. I'm going to get him on the show before the year. We got a magazine called Diamond Magazine. Uh, dope dude, posts a lot about his family. But. He made a comment, and motherfuckers, you know, we be going hard at the people in some of the pictures with Diddy. And I'm like, bro, we don't be having no information to what aspect they were within this. They could have been very well that nigga that saw the motherfucker take the shirt off and dip. But because you photographed with a motherfucker that's accused of some wild shit. Birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather. So it's like. And, Guilty with association. Yeah, I had some fucked up friends. I wasn't doing this shit, but it was like, bro. But I'm with them, though. shit around me. But at, at some point in time, when we got old, I'm like, all right, bro, if you keep doing it, I got to gotta distance myself. It ain't no love loss. I just got to love you from a distance. Because I can't be Because I can't get yeah. caught up in no shit that you doing. But I ain't here to, I don't want to know nothing about that shit. You still my dog. Still love, but bro. But yeah. we got to fuck with each other in a different capacity. But so, but me. Nigga, y'all had matching fits. They did. Nigga, I don't know two niggas that show up. Nah, you could have been two niggas that randomly showed up and to a party. called him daddy, too. Diddy and his daddy shit. I remember we said that shit to Fabulous. That nigga whole Fabulous face Fabulous and all. Who was on her? Jada Kiss? Yeah, they was looking like. He was like, I like when you be scraping and scrambling, daddy. daddy. And he was like. <laughs> he hit Fab. Like, what the fuck? Fab, what the fuck is nigga? And I know them nigga. I know Fab wanted to go out, but he's like, last time I said something, this nigga Ray J called in to a place. When that's why the Breakfast Club ain't live no more, cause Ray J calling in on the first ever episode, going the fuck off on Fabulous. And so that's a crazy interview. I ain't see that. Bro, you gotta Excuse Google me. Breakfast Club and Ray J, bro. It's gonna be the first thing pop up. I'm gonna watch it when I, I get think, to the. I think crib. the first ever episode of the Breakfast Club. Like years ago, bro. I mean, the first time, bro. Like. Fabulous was the the guest. Oh, I gotta go see and you. And Ray J called. He was saying some mention Ray J. Ray J called. They was him. arguing. Right. No, Ray J. Bro went off on the right. Man, can I man, man can I find this shit? <laughs> bro, I got the other plug. I have another plug to play it out loud. I have to find. I think I found it. Boy, that nigga Ray J. I'm, I'm gonna find it before we leave, y'all. I'm gonna try to see if we can play it. But that nigga Ray J. Bro, just start going off. He drunk as fuck. Talk about he finna get the goons to take the nigga booty in. Bro, it was some crazy ass shit. The booty goons was finna come get the nigga in. <laughs> he said the booty bro, goons. Ray J, bro, Ray J, Ray J's a wild nigga. He is, though. That's why I believe that when that nigga Vince Staples say Ray J top five West Coast. Look at Ray J backgrounds. A lot of shit that have happened <laughs> in this world that Ray J was directly or indirectly a part of, bro. Yeah, he, like, he's a wild he, look, guy. ever since that shit with Fabulous, bro, Fabulous career was never the same. It ain't though, man. If Fabulous Ever, cold. And that shit came from that fucking shit. Backpack bro. rapper. Kim K. And she Kim ain't been, K. She ain't been the she same reason. Today. She was made because of Ray J in because that Because of Ray J in that video that her yeah. mama put the fuck out. Her mama put it bro, out, bro. They, put, they, bro. they sent that shit to Vivid because they knew they could get a bag off her. Her bird put it out, bro. Her and her mama, and they act like they ain't know. Bro, they team up to kill a mama manager, bro. It's like, well, shit, but you did it. Fuck it. I've seen worse. Uh, she probably looked at that shit for coming. Oh, you're here sucking Ray J. Oh, you here sucking dick. It is Ray J. Ray J. Say <laughs> less. That's Brandy, brother. Let's see how much money we can get for that. She got like a billion dollars for that shit. That's crazy. I did not know her mama. Put yeah, that bro. Tape her on, and her mama, her mama have it like, but her manager pushed hard for that shit, bro. That's crazy. And it made, hey. Crazy work. It ain't something I think I can do to my child, but it. But it made her into who she you, is. When you look at though. the payoff, you be like, God damn. It's crazy how sex is. Like a motherfucker. Yeah. Everybody after that, like, damn, I'll fuck Kim K. That's when she started looking normal. Was looking like her sister Courtney. Yeah, it got started weak. trying to become a black lady, and then they started trying to get into a white shit. woman. And whole family wild. Man. They weird. Especially that think, daddy man thing. The daddy girl. Hey, I ain't here to knock what nobody do. <laughs> he wild. But nigga, that's you a wild been a man. motherfucking dude for. He was like 50. He was like 60. Bro, that's like, that's a midlife crisis. Not saying people don't feel those ways, but my nigga. And he ain't that, no little dude either, man. He's like 65. Niggas five. in the Olympic. 
champion. Yeah, he that one for the word. Triathlon. Triathlon. I'm like, he won, like you, all the stuff. Do you know how much fucking endurance you gotta have to win a triathlon? He won that's triathlon, bike. Bro. That's running a marathon. That's doing a marathon on a bike, as well as doing a marathon by swimming. So he full of testosterone. I don't know what was wrong with him. You like an alpha man, and you want to go be a big old lady. Come on, bro. Fucking Miss Doubtfire. Miss Doubtfire, bro. Uh, Joanna Man. <laughs> God damn. Like I said, I ain't against nobody. And he ain't even a good woman, I'm though, like, man. I'm like, I'm, my thing is, I, that's, that be the part that be fucking me up. You can at least I'm be like, a bad woman. How you go from an ugly nigga to an ugly chick? Like, do what you do. I'm never knocking somebody for what they like do. Like, you the ugliest but woman. But you gonna go from an ugly nigga to an ugly bitch? <laughs> you can at least be bad. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> it's crazy because you got some niggas like, bro, you're going past the picture fence. I'm like, damn, you're like, oh, that's a nigga. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? But I'm like, bro, you ain't even giving that appearance. If you get the scroll up there, go Lord Farquaad ass. And get the scroll <laughs> past Farquaad. that shit. Because that nigga ugly as fuck. Oh, like, he hella ugly. I'm like, Bruce. Bruce Bogus. The only man. part I didn't like about because I like I said, I don't care what nobody do with nah, their life. To each his own. To each his own. As long as you happy, bro, and you not disrespecting me. And I'm saying disrespect to me by being in front of me. Everybody deserves to live their life. Like I said, be kind to motherfuckers. But you're not trying me after you be like, oh, I think you're something like, hey, bro, appreciate it. I ain't like that, though. I don't like that. After that first, I ain't like that. Yeah, you then it's going to get now negative if fight. you keep trying. Because yeah. then it's like, oh, for the bitch, this nigga. Yeah, hey, now you playing you with Because that's just some shit I expect a woman to go off on about. When niggas be pressing her, you, it's, and vice versa. Other than that, bro, appreciate the compliment. I go about keep your business, moving. dog. And I don't keep play it moving. Like that, I yeah, that ain't that ain't my thing, dog. But Bruce, <laughs> Bruce, Bruce is the bogus guy. You and I'm like, damn, Chris Jenner got to be a horrible motherfucker to Man, make a nigga want, to make a nigga old. come out as a whole bitch. Like, you know what? Like, this, you hear about niggas making women start fucking with chicks. This chick made a nigga say, "I'm finna be a chick." I'm finna be a whole. And boy. then I don't think he's. I don't. I think he still like women. So I'm like, nigga, I'm confused. He still like women, I, bro. I feel like, bro, and I know I could Google it, but I don't want to. I need somebody like to just thoroughly break that shit down to me. How does that make sense? Man, there's a lot of people like that, like the they turn sexes, and but they still they like still the, like the sex. So I'm like, are you a lesbian now? They they it be mental stuff, I believe, bro. Are you still a nigga that be fucking bitches because you still got a dick? Like, <laughs> are you a lesbian because you qualify as a woman? The only thing I thought about that shit that was fucked up, and I honestly couldn't believe some women didn't feel it was fucked up when that nigga had just became a woman and then one woman of the year. That to me, that's a slap in the face to women who endure. They've the been shit. women they whole like, life. I've been a woman my whole life, nigga. I, I bleed. Now you gonna let Miss Doubtfire win? And, and this nigga just come in, he get to be a woman for a year, and because he he decided to be true in himself finally. So he been trying Chris shit on for years, and she just on like, no. Yep. But she be on the road, he be in that motherfucker dancing in the bitch. How these look? These look good. Taking <laughs> pictures of the fits he going to get. When Breaking he up heels and shit. Decision. So big ass, get out them here. But you walk around that room like, Bruce, I'm going to act like I ain't see what the fuck I just saw. But you too goddamn big. Too big. Too to be doing that goddamn shit, man. It's like Shaq deciding tomorrow he want to be a chick. Nigga, you are 7'2. I'm too big. You have no choice. I'm not saying it ain't no big bitches out here, but nigga, come on, dog. <laughs> like, but come on, dog. <laughs> Like, let's be real with our fucking self, man. Me, get your shit together. Yeah, get it together, me. Man, we're going to get on one more topic before we go into our interview with my dog, Jay and mine, man. But if you wanted to find the world's dumbest niggas, you need to head over to the stuff about the Young Dolph trial. I've never seen, I mean, they say niggas is stupid. I've never seen a more niggas is stupid moment than these two niggas involved in this shit. Because one, y'all carried out a hit for somebody for only a hundred. Y'all niggas didn't even advocate for a hundred thousand a piece. Y'all advocated for a hundred thousand a split. And you, you even said, y'all both ain't get 50 50. So somebody gets 20 or 10 and another 10 out of this, and they probably didn't even do no work. Y'all niggas was gonna get forty bands a piece to take a nigga life away, nigga. That is something that nigga you, you can, can work go to at, work. You can work at Chick Fil A damn there and get forty bands as an assistant manager. Yep. They can go work at Waffle House and get like sixty as a manager. 
You, the only thing y'all got was tax free. Fuck like I heard that they only got like eight hundred dollars. Like, bro, yeah. the nigga, one of the niggas. I don't know if the other one ever got some bread, but he said he only got eight hundred. Nigga, first of all, if I carry out a hit and I know you owe me forty bands and I do it for the forty bands, I only get eight hundred. I'm, I'm gonna carry you. out two hits. Something to kill you. Yeah, yeah. I got it's two hits. Got to go because yeah. nigga, you owe me thirty nine thousand two hundred dollars. Oh, we real off right now. <laughs> we real <laughs> the fuck <laughs> off. I was like, hey. The scales is not tipping. Yeah, they supposed to and show it. I'm like, like I'm kill you too. I'm like, like, bro, first of all, any movie, any real story I've heard about a contractor killing, niggas don't even start for less than half. Yeah, these were no real hitmen this, at all. Well, I mean, Big Jook ain't got to take the L for it because he did. Yep. And I mean... I'm right, more than sure that is a chain reaction from to, that, to the streets knowing that that he shit paid happened. for it. Yeah. So tomato, tomato. They try to kill a nigga mama too. Try to get the mama, and it might not be over yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, niggas not gonna go behind. Nah. That. Especially this shit is resurging everything. It's like, bro, y'all did that for this. All right. We gotta. All it gotta right. be some yeah, more blood. Some more, it's some more blood. It's gonna. Yeah. It's gonna happen to niggas. Just stop. And the one thing I did say to this is just funny how, dude. The nigga, I'm talking about. I guess if you're going to go to jail, you only gave me $800, I guess a canary I'm going to have to be. Because, nigga, you got me fucked up. You ain't giving my money. You act like you weren't going to get my money and I was too scared to kill you. Cool. Both our lives going to be ruined. Well, well, maybe if they was compensated more, maybe he wouldn't be up there right. He wouldn't be up there right. Yeah. But it also don't, don't matter. Because the nigga y'all telling on can't defend himself. Nope. And, but a part of me, and I ain't, I'm no conspiracy theorist whatsoever. But it's he could have. I've heard they Gotti real beef was with Big Juke, and not, I mean not Gotti. Dolph beef was with Big Juke, the brother. So and he always called that nigga Gotti's sister and all that shit in the rap. So that very well could have been because they both was in the street shits and Gotti just kind of tagged along his brother. But I'm thinking like that he could have been very well put out by Gotti, and it's easy to put it on a nigga that can't. Say nothing about it. Yeah, dead man can't, can't talk. The, can't fuck up the money. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, nigga, you gonna have to rat. Say Juke did it. Y'all gonna have to go down for this shit. And I'll take I'll make care sure of y'all, y'all family yeah. straight. I ain't. I ain't going. That's why I also ain't putting myself in. I'm not even putting myself in no predicament for me to feel like I gotta tell on a nigga. Don't, bro, don't do the crime around me. I got a family to worry about. <laughs> At least you keep it in real though. No. Facts, but I also know the rules of the do shit. No don't do nothing around me. Like as an innocent bystander, but and they know for a fact I know that shit. It's like like, bro, you was walking past in the video, we know you saw it. Bro, I ain't see yeah, shit. Bro, you gonna go down. Oh my god. All right, dog, you better. You better you, you better, better too. I'm gonna give you twenty four to forty eight hours. I will sit in this cell for this long. But on that tour, on that forty ninth hour, my nigga, it's over with. when you see, when you start smelling them good honey hot wings coming through here, <laughs> just me. know I'm going to the room and I got a spray. I'm telling, but I also know that if I was a nigga a part, willing to participate in a crime, I'm not telling because I don't respect niggas that tell to save themselves. This nigga is telling to save himself. Yeah. To get least amount of years, because the other one probably. Well, y'all both shot the gun. And that ain't so, honorable. That so, ain't honorable. Yeah, it's like, bro, you were willing to participate. But he also told, because that nigga only got $800 for killing a nigga. And to hear that you said, hear that nigga say, well, we knew he was going to be in town because he was giving out turkeys. The nigga coming back to do something for y'all neighborhood. And you want to take a nigga. So I'll be like, motherfuckers be making all these, these niggas from the hood be getting all this bread you so adamant about. Posting up in the hood. It's like, bro, dude, you could do good for your city. You don't always got to be out there. Well, I can put money into a community, pop in when I can, and it's going to be like, oh, niggas ain't know I was here type shit. Because when you go, when you moving like how we know the type of nigga, go, go, Dolph carried himself was like, nigga, I'm better than y'all niggas. And y'all yeah. niggas know that. I get money. I ain't never had that. I do this shit on my own. No record deal, none of that. I hustle, made it do what it do, and the streets love me and the world love me. Like, we wouldn't even know who Big Junkie is, for real, unless you were Memphis nigga. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't know nothing about this nigga. No, nah, yeah. Juke. I've heard about Gotti's brother. But I didn't know Juke. I yeah. didn't know his name. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I've heard the name said, but I would it'd have been one of me could have walked past me. And you wouldn't know I who Juke know. was. Nah, me neither. So, that, that shit be fucking crazy, man. But rest in peace, Dolph. 
I hope them niggas get whatever time they deserve. Yeah. All of that shit, man. And just a quick tidbit, bit, man, before we do one more song before we get into this interview. Black people. I know what this Diddy shit going on. It's crazy. He fucked up if he did it. He did it, he did it, he didn't, he did it. But stop praying on the downfall of other niggas getting the same type of treatment, bro. I hate that. If now, if, they're, if they did something, then they deserve it. But if I hate seeing all these posts, they're like, well, they got Diddy, Beyonce, and Jay-Z next. Why would you want that to happen? Because what if they didn't do nothing? You just, I'm like, bro, we all, we're hearing stories from niggas who've never been there. And that's the speculation right now that a whole bunch of other people, people is about to be implicated inside this case. And I don't think so. I hope tell, not. But thinking he gonna tell, I was like, bro, I think Diddy gonna end up dead before he end up telling motherfuckers. I, I hope he don't kill himself, but I can kind of see, dude. If it, but it, if it come to be true, because he don't want to. He he one of them guys I believe that don't want to have that stigma on him for the rest of his life to be walk around now. Yeah, now you freaky like, Diddy. Oh, you gay Yeah, yeah. Shit Diddy, Diddy been ducking Them motherfuckers for years But he done had that for a long he time He done had implications We should have knew From the shiny suits He made niggas wear He been kinda He been kinda he been iffy. Yeah, yeah. Like, Diddy I ain't got nothing To do with that man But get y'all shit together man But we finna go on Another quick 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 Musical break man Then I gotta Holler at my dog JMI Kinda let yeah. y'all into Who he is as an artist man How he moving With the music And all that So we finna play Real funky Real funky. By my dog, JMI, man. It's episode 52 of season two. It's your boy, Nico the Great. And we are coasting. Turn up, turn up, and turn it on up, man. We back. Season 2, episode 52. Ethnic issue more. We coasting with my boy J and my. Yeah. Y'all, you already know what time it is, man. We got to get into that motherfucking interview. Tap into the world of J and my, man. This music. I played for y'all four tracks tonight, man. We got At Peace 98, Vibing by the Church, Too Much, 
and real funky. Real funky. So Make I sure hope y'all, y'all been y'all out. been vibing, man. I hope y'all been grooving, man. Shout out to all my people on Facebook. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to Twitter. Y'all already know the vibes, man. I'm always rocking with y'all ashy asses. But as you know, man, like I said, man, we got my dog Jeremiah in the building. What's so up, my up, boy, up? for those who maybe tonight is like introduction to you, never heard about your artistry, music, none of that, what you do. Let our listeners and viewers know everything about yourself and who Jeremiah is. What's up, man? My name is Jeremiah. I'm from East St. Louis, Illinois. It's Deuce Nine. Uh, shit, I'm a, um, a hip hop artist, uh, backpack rapper. You know, that's what they say I am or whatever. But I'm a real, real lyricist, bro. Yeah, represent for the real lyricists. Yeah, so yeah. that's true. Facts, man. Y'all heard the bars, man. We got me and bro got tapped in on you know, through social media, and we linked. You know when I was doing my run and doing my do that shit live performances. So y'all already. I, what, 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 it was called Intro. My yep. song Intro, yeah. And Finna that, Blow. Shout out to that, that song. Oh, I should have put this song on here. Yo. Yeah, bro. That, I, I played it on here before. Yeah. I played all the songs I done did before, but I'm not done did the videos and all that. But that was that was a good vibe, man. We did it. We was vibing by the church. We was really by the church. Yeah. Yo, Rest in peace, from, Cold Case. Represented for we, Cold we, Case. We did the vid, part of the video over there, man. Which was my second time using that area. At that mural. Yeah, yeah, man. So rest in peace, that good brother, man. Yeah, rest in peace, the case. Life gone too soon, man. But how did you get into, you know, get into rapping and making music? Man, I've been rapping since I've been a young, uh, like about eight years old, nine years old. So it was always like an outlet for me to just like to put my feelings down, like my journal or whatever. Like, you know, back in the 90s or whatever, like. We was trying to be like Chris Cross and, and be kid rappers and stuff like yeah. that. So I started really young, like trying to tap into my rap side and stuff like that. Cause I wanted to be like like Chris Cross, Bow Wow, La Romeo. So I was young picking up that, that yeah, we picking up that microphone. We a year apart, so we was in that area. I've been telling people, y'all don't know about a motherfucker having motion like fucking Lil Bow Wow. Oh hell no, nah, nigga. Yeah. We clown them now as an adult. But that nigga was running shit as a fucking kid. Yeah. Even on the like big rap levels. Oh like, yeah, he was better than some. Of, I ain't gonna say better, but he was bigger than he was a, big, some right? of the grown ups. His yeah. favorite rappers, bro. Yeah. It was just it showed you the power of kids. Then we didn't have social media like that. And without social media, no so social media. Think about if Bow Wow came out in this era of social media. It'd be crazy. That nigga would be the biggest star ever. Like biggest fucking star. I don't think no kid. NBA young boy who. Not facts, bro. Yeah. Facts, but like the the pandemonium NBA young boy get. That's Bow Wow. From niggas, because I ain't never seen no girl go crazy. I know it's girls that like them. Yeah. But how these niggas be groupied out over that nigga was how girls was groupied. Like Bow Wow was making little heifers faint. Yeah. That's different, nigga. Twelve years old. Twelve, bro. <laughs> I bought the Beware the Dog CD that came with the bandana oh, yeah, that said sure. Beware the Dog. Yeah. Like nigga, bounce with me was that shit. Oh yeah, for sure. He been having motion, man. Shout out to Shad Moss. Shad Moss. We, we clown you as an adult, man, but you was that nigga. Yeah. And I, I argue for that nigga and I argue for Soldier Boy. Because niggas can clown Soulja Boy all they want. I was there during the height of that shit. Oh, yeah, me I'd have been on stage with Soulja Boy when I was in high school. That's cool. Like, we had a Sweet 16 doing a shootout dance, all that shoot shit. Out. Shoot I remember getting putting viruses <laughs> on my computer downloading this nigga music. Soulja Boy, Soulja Boy, bro, is straight from the, like, one of the original motherfuckers from the LimeWire days. YouTube is what it is today because of that nigga. We could talk shit about them getting older and being lame and goofy. Because they they realize that their life ain't where when it was popping. They ain't get to yeah they got the experience, but they if they got to be grown with the fandom like Bow Wow got it a little bit because he was grown still making decent music Make, with Omarion yeah. and all that shit. But Soldier Boy, did, he, yeah. he got like maybe a little inch like kiss me through the phone. And yeah, like, oh. but he also came out at like 17, 16, 17. So it burnt out. You did. So what it worked you did. out. But it's yeah. like, bro, can't nobody take away that you got the first platinum ever ringtone or maybe like the only platinum ringtone. Nope. Like nigga, your song went platinum on a ringtone. Nigga, niggas was spending that little two three ninety nine. They don't like, even do that no more. Don't even do this shit. When I hear a ringtone, I heard one go off the other. My what of my uh, shout out if she's still on here, Officer Morgan at the school. She got a ringtone. I was like, nigga, is that a ringtone? But it was like a song for that person. I was like, damn, I be wanting, I be wanting to go back and get. I wanted my auntie had a ring back tone on her phone for so fucking long, and it was Beethoven. And I'm like, auntie, I don't know if you don't know how to get into it, but get that shit off your phone quick. Because that means you got like singular. 
That ain't even around no more. Your shit ain't even migrated over. You got a flip phone if you still got a ringback tone. Yeah. Or you, I still want to. I want to record a voicemail with the music and me talking in the background. That's all. It's not acceptable. That ain't. Because let me get to the money I want to. You think I ain't finna put one of them on my phone? You (laughs) niggas is tripping. I don't need that random Caucasian lady. I'm finna be on there with a smooth R and B song talking real player. So man, you kind of already tapped into the first one saying like, well now, so at what age did you realize with your music like? I got something with this, and I kind of want to invest in taking it seriously. You want me to be real serious about yeah. that? When I was like 30, bro. All them years, all the years of me like rapping and, 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 and honing in to my craft, I ain't really get serious and start really investing money into my craft till I got like 30 years old, bro. You know, but it, it, it took me to know like, this is what I really want to do And it's something I'm good at And something I should invest in Because yeah. A lot of people don't A lot of artists don't know Like you got to invest in yourself man Like if you want Take your craft to work money. Yeah you got to invest in yourself Thanks bro And like and the crazy part is It may sound like that's far fetched For you to With the skills you do have To have realized it then But when you look at it You got niggas like Cole Griselda yeah. Benny the Bush and that nigga came out like 38. Jay Z, Jay Z, uh, Reasonable Doubt dropped when he was 28 years old. So it like, was, bro, it was never, later. It's never too late. Two chains. Two, two ch- Rick Ross. The greatest rebrand, the two greatest rebrands in life. Layaway becoming Klarna, a firm, quad paying all that shit. And two chains coming from Titty Boy. Titty Boy, yeah. Because I've never seen a grown nigga change his name at like 40 and realize like, hey, I can fucking rap. And it was cold. It was fucking rap. That boy cold. Like, we can't act like he didn't get the, I'm not saying he wasn't an integral part of DTP. Because niggas, they had a good run. They did. With Chingy, all Luda, of the Luda yeah. and all them. Shauna. She Shana. still got bars. Shauna still cold. For herself. Yeah. Still got bars. But... Two chains was like, bro, I'm gonna be titty boy. I'm gonna get off DTP. So I, it's like I had to let my wings soar. And the nigga just start like, I think what is it? The real true, what the real true? Whatever that mixtape was, still one of the greatest mixtapes. Cocaine fa- Cowboy. Cocaine that Cowboys was, shit, was that shit, bro. His song KO with him and Big Sean. KO. I think is one of the greatest KO. two chain songs he got. See how KO, that's my shit. Bro, both of them niggas was on that shit. When I woke up, up this morning, morning all I, I could think, think about was you. Cause you. when I went to sleep bro, last nigga, night, it was that's just it, bro. He was just like, it wasn't like he coming crazy lyrical, but it was just like, bro, I can rap for nigga. I, I live down south. You need no amount to come in this bitch give you double, triple entendres, but I may drop some shit in the rap. Like first of all, I think Two Chains is a part of. Single handedly one of the top ten greatest songs ever in the world to me. Which one? And Duffel Bag Boy. Ah, oh, Duffel Bag Boy. Hell yeah. I, being a nigga that was at an HBCU during the time <laughs> Duffel Bag Boy was out, I watched how a party can go from turn to, super to turn. all of us being the dope boy. When Duffel Bag Boy come on, niggas is in this bitch singing the whole. I'm talking from chicks, all of that. We in this bitch, and I don't do nothing. Like Lil Wayne, that's the greatest hook ever. It is. It it's is. one of the greatest hooks ever because that nigga didn't drop a verse on that song, and he got the most memorable part of the song because that shit was from here. I'm like, bro, that song should have won a Grammy in my eyes. That song should have did like numbers for like hip hop music, but maybe it was just a southern thing. I don't know, but the shit. What it meant to my life at that time, I ain't had shit to be doing being no fucking duffel bag boy. <laughs> but I felt the song. It's like I felt them niggas pain, and them niggas play a circle as a group was cool to me. Yeah, play a circle was tight. Yeah, with, I don't um, know the other nigga. With dollar, that. dollar. Okay, I thought it was something. I knew it was yeah. something with a D. But uh, pause. Uh, but that nigga two chains. Shout out to two chains for the greatest rebrand this side of the Mississippi <laughs> and Clarna. Now. What do you feel helps set yourself aside from other artists like within this area? I feel like um, I don't try to be like no more of these other rappers around here. Like I don't try to put myself in a box as far as being like a trap rapper. Even though I still got trap content in my music, but like I don't like 
I don't focus on that. That ain't my focus, and I don't I don't talk about killing and stuff like that. Even though I come from that background, but that ain't that ain't what yeah. it's about. I want to show I want to show the younger artists, and I want to show artists in general you can still be dope, and and and, and not talk about that stuff. You know, we ain't gotta um, put too much of that stuff out there. We got too much of that anyway. Too, bro, we got more than enough killing and drilling and music to where it's like, bro. It's okay just to be a cool nigga. Yeah. Like people think it's like I'll be telling them, it's okay to be cool, bro. Or kids who be like, we nerd. I'm like, bro, hey, it wasn't accepted when I was a kid to be a black nerd. I'm like, nigga, embrace it. Embrace. I get the love you deserve now. It may be late, but you get to come in it from the bottom part of it. Yep. Two of my kids, I would call them if they what they call them, blurs. <laughs> I would call them that with the youngest one. He he more the cool nigga type. My son, I go to school, do my work. I like anime. I'll be telling my like, bro, I feel like I'm too late in the game to get into that. But I wish I, I, I did, did when I was get younger. into it. Yeah, I might have liked it. Yeah, because yeah. I'm like, bro, I was clowning niggas for what? Acting like I wasn't watching Nickelodeon and shit. Yeah, nigga, I I'm had like, Pokemon bro. cards. I'm from the hood. Bro, listen, I, listen <laughs> that's why my son do I got tired of him talking to me about Pokemon one day. And he was little. I'm like, bro, why you talking to me about Pokemon so much? He, I was like, why you like it so much? He was like, well, because you was telling me stories about when you was little and all the cards you had and what you like. That's what made me get interested. And I was like, damn. I don't even remember talking to you about that shit. But because now it's a love for you, cool. I'll embrace it like I should have then because we was the cool niggas with Pokemon cards and we yeah. wasn't walking around nah. with holes in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Like, but I had them bitches had on them, deck. Though, yeah. I was collecting Beanie Babies, all type of shit. I got them motherfuckers are still set to this day. I don't know where my Pokemon cards at. But the Beanie Babies is under my mama's steps. <laughs> my pops, he's like, bro, you got to get these motherfuckers. I'm like, bro, I think they work something. Just hold on. I cash in. I'll split the bread. But it's just like that shit is acceptable now. But I feel that because you do got music that does stand out to where it's like if you didn't tell me you was from this area, I wouldn't know that. The same thing I was kind of explaining to you about Reese Young. If a nigga didn't know he was from the loop because he say it proudly, he gives you more of an East Coast vibe to his music. You you give me more of a West Coast, That's weird. but like a West, not your, like your Dom Kennedys or in that lane, Larry June, like the niggas is like, bro, yeah, nigga, it's cool to be cool. I get a lot of inspiration from the guys, yeah, too, that you, and, and you, that you listed. Yeah. You can hear it, and to me, I'll be telling folks, get to come, and that's not even a comparison. I'm not saying like you sound like yeah. this person. It's just saying like, the feel. You fit, if they have one of their playlists, you, you could toss your song into that playlist and you would gain the followers you deserve to get. Because motherfuckers be like, damn, this mesh with this type of music. Let me look into this nigga. So I definitely feel that vibe for sure standing out differently because it's a it's a lane for people that make that type of music that a lot more than folks realize that we love. Yeah. Like whether you call it backpack, whether you call it mood music, whatever you call it, it's just a vibe of like, nigga, this is this is my life. This is I could tell y'all about my life without telling y'all about the foul everything. shit yeah. about it. Like I could put it. It shows you got a way with words. Thanks. It's easy to talk about. Ah, oh, shot him up. I killed Kim. Kill. No, nah, nigga, how can you explain this story in a different way? Like as much as niggas hated the King Von and all that. Yes, he was a drill rapper, but the way that nigga could put tell a stories, story. Yeah. I was like, bro, I was like, for y'all age group, the nigga's the greatest storyteller I heard. He was, especially in that genre of music, in that drill yeah, genre. Yeah, like, I'm he like. He told the best stories. Crazy stories. The, all of Crazy Story Part 3 is the best one to me. And maybe because it was true, you know. Th- that's, that's, what, that's what it is. And that's what, I hate to say it, like, that's what make the best music, for real. The more authentic it is, the more. When you talking about that, it do. But, th- and that's more so because you got to, like, we knew. A lot of them niggas back in the day, some of them niggas weren't really doing Hell that shit. No. And it was stories of their partners and their family. Yeah. But it was the way how they told the story. Like, Jay-Z, we knew he was a drug dealer. He ain't kind of talked that shit, but he gave you that, like, that drug talk without telling you, nigga, I'm out here hand-to-hand and that shit. I'm finna paint a picture for you on how my life was in the game. To now that he do that shit, it's just like, now I'm telling you in a grown man sense. Like, nigga, I get money. I get money. I, got, I was getting money then. I got paintings. Like, nigga, I, I have assets. <laughs> I was getting money then, but nigga, I'm getting stupid. Like, nigga, I went from trapping to being a billionaire. Billionaire. To my wife, damn near being a billionaire on her own accord. Man, nigga, what? The shit you supposed to be selling dope for and all that shit is what they attain through the normal way. I use that money to make this shit work. Now, my kids, 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 kids. 
is good. Everybody in the lineage of that shit is great. Ah, oh, forever. There's no way that money, if somehow that money get fucked over, I don't know who did it. Yeah, they rich forever. Because you're rich forever. And then your kid, Blue, Blue got a Grammy. Already. Just for having credits for talking on the song. She got like one or two of them on. It's niggas who've been Snoop Dogg don't got a Grammy. Snoop and Dogg. I think Snoop Dogg is, if you go pound for pound, I think he's the greatest rapper ever. If you go for by statistics. what he's done. Yeah, statistics. It ain't, it ain't saying like lyrically or no, none no, of that. No, no, but no, I'm no. just saying like, come on, Snoop is like the face, of the, Snoop is the, face of the Olympics. the Olympics. Snoop is the, okay, yeah, is in better words, Snoop is the most known rapper in the world. You could put Snoop Dogg anywhere in America and they go, whatever language, they going to say Snoop Dogg. They going to say Snoop You can't put Jay-Z everywhere. Everybody's not going to know Hov. A lot of people will. Motherfuckers is not going to know Nas. Nope. Not Motherfuckers may know Drake because of the, the what he, Drake, Kendrick, and all them niggas call. Niggas are going to know them, but niggas fucking... The smallest baby no Snoop Dogg to the oldest motherfucker in the room no Snoop Dogg. He the most he the most noticeable rapper. But that's yeah. why I said, bro, notable like put him in a room or anywhere. Who everybody gonna know him? First a nigga like six six, skinny as hell. He ain't gained a pound. And he smoking weed. Smoking weed. Snoop Dogg made Snoop Dogg was giving out pins at the Olympics of him. It did look like Stevie Wonder, but <laughs> it was him blowing rings. That was because they. What I didn't know about the Olympics, every athletic team get a pin, and they pass them out to people, so you can say you met this person and got their pin for their team. That nigga pin was him smoking. It don't get no more mucking greater. Don't than get that. no realer than that. Yeah. Like so, shout out to Uncle Snoop, man. Yeah, shout out to Snoop. So, bro, with the style of rap, you know, the backpack rap music, all of that, do you feel like that style is slept on within this, you know, Greater St. Louis, East Saint to St. Louis region? Well, I'm a, I'm gonna speak for my side of the water. On the east side, for real, it's down down rock with it for real because it's something different. And over mm-hmm. there, it's like it's a club scene for real. So a lot of people over there they want that twerk music, they want the drill music. So my music, you know, they they don't really check it out for real like that. So that's why I've been trying to get over here in this market yeah. to 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 rock out with some of the the hip hoppers over here and shit. Bro, you gotta start popping out to these like open. Yeah. That they do because a lot of them niggas be in there. Like I said, like me and this nigga Lou Tribe, okay, just good friends, bro, just do content, bro. Right? He's doing videos. I just met the nigga. I'm like, bro, I fucked with you. Man, I'm like, the music was dope. So yeah, bro, cold. I done interviewed him two, three times on here. One of my performances, like, niggas don't get him to come outside for shit. Nah, he won't come up. But I got him to do a mic performance for me. He killed When me. I was doing my free ones, I was just like, hey, bro. I hit him up. I'm like, bro, I need you to do something for me. He's like, well, I'm like, bro, I need one of my films. He was like, I got you, bro. I got you. Oh, the one he did by the bus, by his yep, crib. By yeah. his, and that's his bus. Yeah, that's his crib. One, one of the two. I think he just, he's selling the last one he had, too, for personal reasons. But he was like, I was like, bro, but I need to do it by the bus. He's like, it's parked in the back, bro. Yeah. So we did that shit. We chopped it up, smoked. But that's nigga, it wasn't just about that. Yes, I came to get what I want, but I still moved up. Yeah, up there he smoke, me, bro. Yeah. Chopped it up, talked about it, tapped into his news. Like he, I told him, he wanted people like when I start doing my sit down one on one interviews outside of this with his camera set up and more blast style. I'm gonna really start diving into the scene out here and how music is. Cause there's some talented motherfuckers that we don't know from you, uh, him. Nando got his notoriety. Oh, yeah. Nando is the Shout out my nigga yeah. Nando. And I've been fucking with Nando since he started. Like, I started this show in 2019. I had him interviewed on here in 2019. And I, I done had him maybe four times. Just And it's just been that relationship. Just like, bro. Have you ever heard of Nico Soul? What? Yeah, that boy called. That's my nigga. I'm yeah, that's my Nico. little bro. He and called. I'm going to get him on here too. Yeah. I, I did a performance with him. Yep, I seen him. Yeah. Uh, but I got hip to him. Through Stefan Arkell. Yeah. Because I'm on two of his songs. Talking. On the Stefan Arkell? Two of his tracks. Uh, God damn, I can't think of the name of them off the top of my head. But I always joked around saying I wanted to talk on people's songs. And I do the intro to two of his tracks. And I was in the video for both of them. <laughs> one of them, Telly shot. That's and then name. the other one, I shot. And I just, his girl had the camera for my part. But I met him through that because I when he did his first... Uh, Feature uh, concert at Pops. The I, sushi. Did, I did my shit. Yeah. yeah, I did my part, 
and that shit was that's when I stayed in Cahokia. I lived in Cahokia for four, my first four years living out here. Uh, right off Camp Jackson and shit. So I did that motherfucker and then I met Nico just at the rehearsals. I'm like, yeah, this nigga cold. Yeah, Nico cold. And then shit, and I was playing me music. Then when I posted I was trying to do all these performances, Telly hit me up like, bro, I got this dude I fuck with. I wanted to do one. So we met up, did that shit downtown. I got the track there. I'm like, this nigga different. That boy cold. Like, this lame. nigga cold. I'm like, bro, it's a lame for you. Yeah. I'm like, I hear R&B artists, bro, but I'm like, yeah, that nigga can rap. And he can rap, yeah. Because they play me another song after oh. that that I be looking for. I know it's on my phone somewhere because they airdropped it to me to play it while we was walking. It's like, so, what's it? I think it's called Cocaine Cowboy. Oh, that's the song, yeah. We be in the kitchen, man. Yeah, I was like, like nigga, cocaine. I stopped. I'm like, bro, yeah, oh, we got to do another one. We got to do this shit. So shout out to Nico Soul, bro. Yeah, shout out to Nico Soul, get bro. Get here, man. But y'all, man, my nigga Cook Crack. Good crack yeah. a beast, Good yeah. crack cold, bro. That boy a beast, so. Jay Kazi. Jay Kazi, one of the most unique rappers, like, cause he can be animated with his shit. So it take me back to how like Missy and Bustin them rap, but the way that nigga can move his voice and do and the, the cadence of what that nigga got, bro. You, you heard of Corey Grimes? I've never heard music, but I've heard the. You name. heard his name? You need to check him out. He like. He, he like the cold. I ain't gonna lie, man. Dude, like the cold. I, I put him over me, bro. And then, you know, okay. the motherfuckers be like, ah, oh, you can't put nobody over here. Yeah, dude, cold, bro. Sometimes we be realistic. Yeah, you gotta be realistic I'm about it, bro. I ain't, I ain't not saying I'm not good. Nigga is cold, the dude bro. is cold, bro. I'm about to tap into him, man, but yeah. we, like, we, I mean, number one, Shmino. Like, Shmino crazy. Artists from, like, I heard that, like, it's crazy how I know more about the nigga than a lot of people in the loop. And I heard the nigga from Living, and when I was back home, he popped in one of my playlists and shit. I'm like, nigga from St. Louis, but he made his start in Chicago. I'm like, bro, this nigga is different. Really different. It's like, he one of the people, bro, I've never, I have songs that I don't like as much as others, but I've never heard a bad song from the nigga. To be like, I don't like, like this, yeah. To, like, his album, New War, bro, one of my favorite albums. It's my most That's the one that got the swine on it? No, nah, that's Black Swine. That's Black Swine, that's yeah. He's sitting there getting his head, like he on a TV. I listen, I listen, I listen, I listen to it. I got an album front to back, every fucking song. And I seen the nigga twice here for his crib miss concerts. Missed the last two, pissed. But I, my first ones are like 20, before COVID. Nigga different. Yeah, I like what Smino doing. He he showing you could be different, bro. Yeah, yeah but still be up, bro. though. Yeah. It's always good to be versatile in your music. So, I mean, bro, you just did the, the Mamba show. Yeah, that was dope. That was like one of my best shows. Ever so yeah, far, like, like for as like with the um, uh, like the people there, man. It was so many people there. Then the artists that performed with me, hella dope. Like everybody was dope. The Jr. Dot, Almighty. Um, so that's my nigga from college. Who? Almighty. Almighty. Yeah, I went to school. Yeah, with he him. was he was a real good performer. Kenny Moses was crazy out there. Met, of course, Stefan. Who was the other? I met. So when Stefan did his episode, a few of them came with him. So I met Kenny Moses. Uh, it was another dude. He was on that freestyle with him. The last dude with the dreads. Dreads, dreads, dreads. Because he was on the show, too. Mm, dang, I'm trying to think of how the Astro. guy's name. A- Astro? Was it Astro? I think he, he, I think he bagged up. Did he not do the concert with y'all? Yeah, I don't well, think. Well, he was a... Initially, I know he was a part of it. Yeah. But he, him, Kenny Moses and Astro was, was guest on the show with him, as well as a visual plug. Yeah. She kind of kid, but me and her go way back. From Visual now. plug, yeah. I was trying to do some work where I still want to do yeah, work with her. Dope, yeah, dope videographer. Yep. I know her from back in my city, my music days down here and shit. But so, how, how was that like feeling being on there with all them people? And all Man, that? like since I um like really started taking this stuff serious again, this my music and stuff. Like when I was thirty, like I was telling you, like that being like one of my biggest things, biggest goals to reach that 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 on um, venue pops, you know, because a lot of people be like, ah, oh, pops, I didn't performed in there so many times, but you got to think like that's the only venue we have around her that had like Gates performing there, yeah. like the Money Bag Yo and sleep on pops, man. yeah, like big orders been on that stage, so ain't that where you want to be at? Niggas yeah. hate they talk shit because where it's at. Yeah, it's like, in South J. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I like pops. Like that. They had like all the smoke and the lights and stuff. You know, they made me feel like this is what you work for right here. This is the stage you want to be yes, on sir. right here. Did yeah. you do it with a live band or track? I did it with the track. Like, okay. but next time I know to get my stuff tracked out, and we're not tracked out to to come in there with just the instrumental and just rap it like that. Cause yeah. sometimes when you rap and you got that track on, you fighting against the voice. Now people are like, man, I want to hear them boys. Yeah. You got live band music. Right on, bro. I do. I like performing with live bands. Live band music. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
music to where like you could you the type of, like and shout out, I don't know if he he tapped there right now, but I'm gonna definitely let him know, man. I'm gonna shout out my dog Alonzo Townsend. Okay, he's really big on the music scene. His uh, I think it's either his father or grandfather's a big Grammy Award winning blues player from St. Louis. He does a lot in the music scene here as far as like managing artists and putting them on shit. But he runs like the the lineups for the City Foundry. Oh, that's hard. To where the uh, like the little wine, the winery over there. And he be having like Rocky and did and a bunch of people to deal with. You got the type of music for that setting with a live band. Yeah, try to tap me in or point me in the right Alonzo, direction. I'll show you his page before we leave. Alonzo Townsend, bro. He's somebody who's just he wanted them like, bro. You just want to introduce yourself, like, hey, bro. I talk to you, bro. I got the type of music, and I just want you to hear like you got the music meant for that. And it's a nice crowd, bro. People come out, bro. It's dope. I, I haven't been yet. But one time I was going to go, something came up, I was going to go for a new tribe. And he, like I said, he's my favorite artist out here that I haven't got to see. Yeah, I want to see him try to perform, too. Outside of me recording. But, like, at a performance, because I'm like, nigga, rap, rap, That like, boy cold. He cold. Like, Shane, I just told my boy, uh, my nigga, shout out Riley B, one of the dopest rappers out here, too, bro. I do a show with him called Connect the Dots. You talking about Riley who like he make like some trap music type, but it ain't it ain't Nah, you talking about Riley. Uh, I know you yeah, talking about yeah, with yeah. the different voices yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, it's a dude named Riley B. He uh he actually hosts a show that I helped produce called Connect the Dots. So it's, it's different rappers like Nando got a video going viral, all of them. But they sit down with this dude and they like they freestyle it in there. But it's a little interview and all that that come with it. We done did say no. Tef Poe, Tef Poe, all type of motherfuckers, man. I told him, I'm like, brother, be tap into the show tonight. And I was like, I think the, the guest on here would be a good person. Because he more, like, he the type of nigga, like, he a freestyle champion, all type of uh, shit. Yeah, he called. So the nigga can rap, rap. So we're like, any given moment, bro, that nigga can go yeah, off. He ready to rap. So yeah. I, told, I was like, bro, I know some motherfuckers that can rap, rap, that I think should be on here. So I definitely recommended you for sure, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Most definitely. So I mean, bro, what do you want your listeners to take from your music? Uh, for us with my music, bro, I, I want my listeners to take like, um, I just want to give them good vibes, man. Give them good vibes. Let them know, like, man, you ain't you 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 ain't. It's an alternative. This an alternative. You ain't gotta listen to that bullshit. You know, shit. And this this these real flows, man. This some soul food for you, you know, shit. And I, I, I like to put a lot of peace in my music and love too. You know, shit. It ain't it ain't violent at all for real. I like to put love and peace in that. That's what we need out here, man. Yeah. You gotta take in how you want your life to be perceived, man. Taking Thanks. in all that violent music, we can act like it don't be shaping motherfuckers, but we see what it do to kids. Oh yeah. Kids make they got a genre high speed music. You making music to drive around fast and potentially die? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. But them, my, them ain't my kids because I'm a bad. I ain't going for that shit. So, bro, what's next for JMI? Man, JMI about to keep on dropping his music, bro. Um, my I have a um, song, my song Too Much is in a um, movie coming up on Tubi called A Broker. Okay. Uh, clap that up for that. Yeah, yep. Man, that's, that's uh, I got I got a project probably uh, about to drop soon. The Monsanto project with about three or four songs. You know, just okay. keep stuff going. Yeah. Yes, sir. Y'all heard too much, man. We did that. Uh, as the radio break right before we got to our random topics. Yeah, yeah so. and that was a bad version too. Go check out the real version out on um, any platform, out on Spotify, out on Apple iTunes. Go check it out, bro. Go check it out, y'all. And I gave y'all, not only I gave y'all the Facebook page link, I gave y'all the Instagram link. I also gave my Apple Music listeners the link to get directly to his Apple Music page, as well as for Spotify, I gave y'all the direct link to get to his Spotify page. So let's, let's go follow the page, man. Let's run the bus, monthly listeners up. Let's tap into this music, man. Let's get this streaming going. So just besides that, man, even though they got all the links, man, where can our listeners and viewers find any and everything with JMI? Uh, you can go on YouTube, bro. Check me out on YouTube. Check me out on Instagram. I'm everywhere, bro. Just go check out JMI, man. And it's spelled out for y'all. For yeah. Y'all that's slow. Yep, J-A-H-M-8-8-D. JMI. Y'all heard that, man. We got to clap it up for my boy J.M.I. in the building, man. Before I can relinquish you, 
Usually this is the past master's part, but he's not here today. So I got to keep it going, man. We got this wonderful thing called a rapid fire. Let's go. As he will say, it's study long, study wrong, like a good game of spades. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't want you to think too long, man. Try to get out the best answer you got. Sometimes it's going to happen, but do your best. Let's get it. Who would be your dream collab on a song? Eric Badu. Ooh, hey, bro, when I prep for this show, I always tell somebody, I, can, I ain't no rapper, but I can rap. I used to do it as a kid, just getting high on freestyling. So I could play around. I'm pretty good at freestyling, just rapping for hellas. If I ever had one song to rap to an instrumental, it would be Didn't You Know by Eric Badu. That's a class, a good that's song. My, that's my prep song for this show. I listen to it on repeat before everybody get here, bro. Like, it's something about that song, bro, that do something the to The energy, it's the frequency. Like, just as soon as I hear them bongos in the beginning and how smooth that shit sliding, I'm like, bro, this to me one of the single greatest songs ever. That, um, my song, not to cut you off, my song, At Peace 98, that's an Erica Badu, um, a live performance beat. And I okay. just, I rapped over it. Okay, I'm going to have to check it out. So what's the, to the live performance song? That's crazy work because I don't. I gotta I'm look. I gotta, no, I gotta look figure on it out. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to figure, exactly figure it out, bro. It is, yeah. So y'all heard that, Miss Badu? Shout out to Three Stacks brought out on stage for the first time. And Hellas, yeah, and his baby that's, mama. That's that's crazy. Like niggas talk shit like, yeah, who your baby mama, Erica? <laughs> That's why you got this bitch dressed like a gypsy playing a flute. She a witch. That Badu box is real. That witch coochie. Any nigga that sell that coochie <laughs> as an incense is the goat. She have Erica Badu flavored incense. I need some of those. Bro, I almost make fifty dollars. I almost bought some. Oh. It's crazy to spend fifty on the incense. Fifty dollars on I'm some like, coochie incense. But I'm scared what's gonna happen to me once it burned in my house. She now she gonna pop I mean, up. This bitch with a kufi on and <laughs> sipping carrot juice. <laughs> two two nose rings. Two nose rings. One hoop. One ring. <laughs> like this dude got too much. They be like, what's face. going on? Like man, it's just peace and love, man. <laughs> She didn't done to my bro. Yeah, bro <laughs> they be like, you bought the incense? Yeah, man. Coochie incense. I'm like, bro, I sniffed it. I rubbed it across my lips so I can smell that cat all day. God damn it. Shout out to the Badu box. God damn it. <laughs> Dream producer to work with. Uh, Dr. Dre. Okay, I can hear that. Still Dr. Dre. You know I make that West Coast music. I yep. think we can make some We can shit. make some fire. Yeah. Favorite artist of all time? Man, Michael Jackson. Shout out to MJ. Favorite song of all time? Uh, Tupac, uh, their mama. Okay, dream city to visit. It could be a country, it could be uh, a somewhere else. Um, uh, man, Barcelona, bro. I want to go to Spain, man. I do too, bro. Yeah, my shout out to my homegirl, uh, my homegirl, uh, Candace. I went to college with her, she's in the Navy. She did it more later years after graduated college, but she lived, she stationed in Spain. So she been there maybe the past two, three years. It's right, cool. crazy. We be talking to her in the middle of the day at the three o'clock at. Or at night, it'd be three in the morning. She'd be ready to get up for work. I'm like, right at the time zone. Completely different. My different. cousin did with that. He's a professional basketball player. So he'd have been from South Korea to Puerto Rico to Russia, all that shit. And the time, I'm going to talk to him late at night. Why? Cause what time it is? He's like, it's early it's morning. like eleven over here, bro. I'm like, nigga, it's nine thirty at night here. <laughs> I'm about to get in the bed, bro. Man. Shit, crazy, man. <laughs> Most influential person in your life? My cousin, my cousin. Um, uh, both. I got two cousins. My cousin Mike and my cousin Ju. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to the fam. Yeah. If you had one wish, what would it be? Man, if I had one wish, bro. It'd be to bring back my own, um, you know, my dead, a lot of dead family and stuff, man. You have to turn back some time for real. Yep. yep. Always got to bring back those loved ones we miss, man. Yeah. So you off the hot seat, man. We got to clap it up for my boy, for Jay sure. Amad in the building. Jay Amad fired up. Y'all already know, man. As I say, I appreciate all y'all ashy asses kicking with us this entire time, man. We had another wonderful episode of Ethnic Issue More, man. Make sure y'all tap in every Tuesday. 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Next week, for sure, we got a content creator and a website designer named Soul Shell in the building. So make sure y'all come tap in and catch that episode. We may see the past master back next week. We may not. If, if you can't come in, maybe I'll get him to be virtual. You never know. But as always, man, we do this wonderful thing called Postal Podcasting, meaning rain, sleet, or snow, we is in this hole. We can provide you with the wonderful news, try to drop a couple of them jewels, and look for all the lost blues clues that that nigga Steve lost 
on his way to rehab. Shout out to Steve checking on the people, man. As always, I'm your boy Nico the Great. This is episode 52 of season two, Coasting. And we about this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah